You're now listening to episode 72 of Signed In, an Xbox 360 podcast, recorded on June 26, 2011. Find us online at signedinpodcast.com. Welcome back to Signed In. I am Jeremy Superfro33. I'm Craig Prof Dresser. And I'm Sean Shonix. How are you guys? Excellent. Good. We're in summer now. Yes. Officially. How's it going? Summer, summertime. I'm Not hating bad. it. Busy. Why every, are you every, every second of it, but I'm good. I'll be good in a week. Because so. he works outdoors and it's been chaotic. Out it's of doors. Ri- it's been ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, hey, let's have hail, snow, sleet, rain, heat. More rain. Humid. I mean, I've had everything out there since I've been out there. It's I'm been tired like the it. last two months have been every season. I've been tired. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shorts. You should get your own show on like Discovery, like yeah. um, Man versus Wild, <laughs> man, man Sean versus, versus Heidi man, Parking Lot, Man versus Garden Center, <laughs> Sean in a tent. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That'd be a good show, though. I should hook up a camera next year and charge people. You don't want to pitch web the tent idea? Oh, you can make it a web broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then I can watch over my guys as they sit and do crossword puzzles when I'm gone. <laughs> Oh, anyway. Anyway. Excellent ideas here. Sweet, sweet. But tons of games to talk about. <laughs> a couple games. A couple. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I hope everybody at home straps in because yeah. uh, there's a lot of games to talk about this episode. And notice he says straps in, not straps on. Correct. Just, yes. just, well, you can. That was last episode. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the people at home know I'm not the one to tell them what to strap on <laughs> or not. That's not my call. Um, They're all adults. <laughs> make their own decisions. We hope. Consensual. Pay their own prices. I don't know. Yeah. But. <laughs> Yeah, we got we a lot have of... an age requirement for this show. I don't think we do. <laughs> I think so. I think I put explicit on it. So, but that doesn't stop <laughs> yeah, anybody does, from downloading. Exactly, exactly. That but just, that's that just. I thought you put that on to bring the kids in. Those <laughs> to that's make a, it sound better than it is. That's a parenting issue, and I'm not about to start. <laughs> that's the candy to this van, right? I, I can't think. I can't think anybody that listens to our show is a good parent anyway. <laughs> Just by nature of their decisions. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's perfect. That's... They've already made poor decisions and listened to our show. Yes. Yeah. That's so good. obviously they can't do anything for their <laughs> children. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Enough of my uh, awesome advice, though. And, uh, yeah, exactly. Making fun of our listeners. Uh, well, how about some video games that we want to talk oh, about? Oh, my goodness. I A couple? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. This episode, I'm bringing you the best in downloadable stuff from the past two weeks. Okay, maybe, awesome. maybe I missed one or two, but... Uh, I've got nine, count them, nine indie games oh my wow. God. Uh, to talk about, in addition to uh, Adventures of Shuggy for XBLA and uh, Trenched, the newest nice. downloadable title from Double Fine, the last of their little series here, but uh, hopefully there will be more. Awesome. I played I, I played a little bit of that Trench too. I got four indie games, but nice. I think you guys are probably going to talk about all the ones I played. Take some um, heat off me. A little Bullet Storm <laughs> DLC, not. Blood Symphony. Oh, I, I played a little bit of that. Yeah. That was oh kind of, that was fun. Uh, some so Red, much. Some Fred Faction, some Alice, and uh, Child of Eden. Went out yes. and bought that. So oh, you bought it? I bought nice. it. Yeah. I couldn't hold. I couldn't wait out anymore. I hate that kind of stuff. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But I went out and well, bought waiting. it. The waiting. The yeah. waiting. Well, like waiting for places to rent it so then I could play it to eventually go, I'm going to buy it anyway type of thing or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, well, screw it. But I heard the waiting is the hardest part. I had some rewards <laughs> on points to, you know, I was saving them for... Uh, a rainy day for well gears of war but uh, <laughs> that was a long time from now so you yeah can build up some more i can try it i can I'm, I'm gonna you'll be good to go i'll yeah, try to. that's a good plan i'm gonna spend some more money so i can save some money <laughs> that's how we think <laughs> what are you this thought? is why i don't use my reward <laughs> points we got problems <laughs> think of all the money i'm saving <laughs> all i do is spend this extra money exactly i spend this 40 dollars. i get 10 dollars for free <laughs> awesome hello <laughs> it's easy math <laughs> trick. Uh, I have a couple indie games as well. Uh, on the XBLA front, I played some Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalkers 2012. Uh, I want to mention some Red Faction because we played some co-op, yeah, uh, nice. Sean and I. Uh, also, I played some Alice into Madness. Uh, also, some Child of Eden because I stole Sean's copy that he bought. 
Borrowed. Uh, oh, I borrowed. Sorry. Well, I guess you haven't given me back. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Thank that's you true. for pulling it's like out. a role reversal here. <laughs> it is. It's Bizarro Day. We'll see if he gets it back. Uh, <laughs> I have a quick. I still don't have your portal. A quick. Or I found was. it. Oh. You snuck back in my house. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Uh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Craig get, let, borrowed the one to me so I could sneak it back into your house. So I'll st- I still have somebody's. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, I'll have a quick hit on uh, some Duke Nukem Forever. Uh, which I played a little bit of. Also, I played some... a demo for that, so I can join in. Oh, there. that's good. That's about as much as I got. Um, <laughs> also, some Hunted Demons Forge. Both of those being games that I'm glad I don't do reviews, real reviews for. <laughs> so I don't have, I'm not forced to play them. Nice. Uh, and some Shadows of the Damned. Yep. And I can't wait <laughs> to talk about that. <sighs> That game. It's going to be an all awesome right. combo. I, I did play that t- game, too, as well. All right, all right. Shall we get into some indie games? Then? Before yeah. we do that, oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah. I want to mention that we're going to have a contest. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I am I happy forgot. to bring that to everybody's attention. In fact, you can probably find the link on our show notes right now Bam. as you're listening to this. What? Or just hit our website, signinpodcast.com, and go to our forums, and you can, you can find the link there as well. We're going to yeah. be doing a contest through our forums for a full, sealed retail copy uh of dungeon siege 3 nice well, excellent I have to say sealed and i'll because i want everybody to know it's like brand totally, new i could have played it before no. that no well, well, we could draw a picture on it no i'm just kidding you draw could draw a picture, a picture on it oh we're not gonna do oh, that we did that we no, we'll think about it we'll think about it if if if, <laughs> if people want pot. that if people want that for the contest i'll do <laughs> well, it for we'll the see. contest we'll but i doubt that they uh so it'll be a contest through our forums uh so just make sure you're on our forums uh register we don't sell your email address or anything and we don't even bother you with email i don't know we don't spam you with anything money for that so uh, no. I'm imagining it's probably just going to be uh, posting on our forum. So yeah. check it out. Hit the link. And we'll talk about more at the end of the show. Oh, I should just grab all the newest people and email them all the time. <laughs> yeah, you said, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> What's up, man? Why don't you talk to me anymore? Are you playing a game? <laughs> this is what I do on the show. <laughs> all right. Now we'll we can talk about our games. About that? All right. All right. Well, actually, before we get into the indie games themselves. God, you never let me start. Craig. I want to make sure that everybody's uh, aware that uh, indie games. If you remember, six months ago, there was a Indie Games Winter Uprising, the special little promotion put together by indie game developers to uh, draw attention to indie games and some of the finer games that are released through there. It was, we even did a special show. We did. Yes. For them. And excellent games came out at that mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It didn't quite work as well as they hoped it would, but uh, but at any rate, they're planning a summer uprising as well. Uh, they have a website now. Um, I don't remember what the address is specifically, but I'm sure if you look up Indie Games Summer Uprising, you can find it pretty easily. Or we'll put it in the show notes. Yes. We'll put so it in the show click notes. click on that. Okay, there you go. And, uh, yeah, and so you can check out all the games that are nominated right now. And there are a ton of games and a ton of really good-looking games. Cool. And so I highly recommend going over there not only to get excited about Summer Uprising. By the way, I would not want to be on that uh, decision committee <laughs> <laughs> that chooses which ones go in and which ones don't. Lots of good stuff there. A few older things, too, kind of just trying to be a part of the promotion. Getting but, updates ooh. and stuff? Uh, there are a few that are getting okay. updates, but... But, uh, yeah, some things like uh, uh, Great Paper Adventure that we talked about last mm-hmm. episode and um, Blocks That Matter that we talked about a couple episodes nice. ago are, yeah. are hoping to be a part of the promotion, too. But uh, but go there not only just for the Summer Uprising, but just to get excited about all these awesome indie games that are coming down the pipeline in summer or, f- and, or fall yeah, and I think because they're going to come out anyway. That's yeah. what I think you mentioned on Twitter when you were talking about it. It's like yeah. even if they don't get picked for the Summer they're Uprising, still they're out. still going to come out at some point, <laughs> most likely. So which, that's awesome. Which is very exciting. Yes. Yeah. So uh, highly recommend recommend going over there to check that out cool uh all right so let's talk about some actual indie games that came out in the past two weeks uh first up that i want to talk about is bloody checkers <laughs> sells for 80 points the developer name was carrie k-e-r-r-y really so, yeah <laughs> so yeah i don't know um so bloody checkers all right as you can probably guess it's a checkers game um but it it it's very different uh, and so it's sort of a checkers game nested within sort of this 3D adventure, uh, almost RPG like thing. Hmm. And so like you start off outside this castle and you have to make your way inside the castle and, you know, you have to find a candle and light it so that you can see things inside the castle. Cause otherwise you're just kind of stumbling around mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, you have an inventory and you collect items and you get money f- 
from various things. And there are these cool little spooky elements, too. Like, I opened up a chest inside the castle, and then, like, this noise happened, and the screen shook, and, like, all these bones started flying out, and the uh, uh, wind came through the, the passage and blew out my candle. It was kind of a neat little effect. And uh, so then you're kind of wandering around, and you find these paintings um, – on the walls and what's great is that if you don't have your candle lit the paintings are all just like skeletons and you can't nice. you can't access them but that's cool. you know, if you bring the light over then yeah, you, yeah. you see these older people and and so you play you play checkers against these these characters and uh and it's it's pretty standard checkers for the most part <laughs> except for the traps <laughs> So you can mm. you can lay traps on your your checkers board on your half of the checkers board, um, and if a opponent's piece lands on one of those traps, uh, then you know they get stabbed or buzz sawed or hammered or whatever, and that's where they become bloody. But then mm -hmm. you also get money for that, um, and so the the trick is you know you can't just throw them all over the place. You can place seven down or something, which seems like quite a bit, but. The trick is to make sure that they land on those squares because, you know, if they're jumping pieces or whatever, right, right. then mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and so that that was a really interesting twist into it. And basically, I mean, yeah, I didn't get too far into it because there's there's actually so much involved in there that, you know, uh, I barely get through most of one game mm -hmm. uh, by the time the eight minute demo is up. Um, but it also has online multiplayer. Okay. That you can play against people. And one thing that I thought was a really nice touch, when you first go into the castle, you see a painting there, and it's history. And so it keeps track of the players that you played so that you can find them again and play against them again if you want to. Nice. Um, yeah. That's really cool. I, yeah, I thought that was a really excellent element to it. Um, and so it's just this in incredible package. I don't know if I mentioned this. This is all only 80 points. Mm. Uh, and it's this incredible package for a checkers game. Um, and, you know, everybody knows checkers. <laughs> so it's not like, although they also have tutorials on how to increase your checkers strategy. Like the first one was like, what's the best opening move? And like, what what's a crappy move to open with? <laughs> and all of that. And so uh, I'm like, this this is really, it's it's really quite quite cool uh and definitely worth checking out and uh if you do check it out also check out the thanks page uh in the help and help and options mm -hmm. um it, it'll have your gamer tag there and it's just a little thanks for you uh via nyan cat <laughs> nice <laughs> so uh <laughs> which i got informed of what nyan cat was at the beginning of the show that must have remember nyan tech way back then it must have been Related to it. So I don't know what any of it is. No. <laughs> no, but it was a girl with the cat ears, remember? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, another indie game I want to talk about is uh, Trigger Finger from Lighthouse Games Studio. It sells for 80 points. Uh, and this is a very simple gallery shooter set in sort of a, a war zone mm -hmm. or whatever. And But what's neat about it is that after every wave, essentially, then you're allowed to kind of upgrade something or purchase like a new gun or a riot shield or, you know, whatever. And so, you know, you can kind of customize how you're playing a little bit. Um, and it's a gallery shooter, but the shoot the the gallery things essentially shoot back at you. <laughs> and in the early stages, it's not too hard to not get hit. But yeah. uh, as it gets more complex and multiple guys are popping out at the same time, you know, uh, that becomes much more challenging, and you're getting hit a lot more. And yeah, and so basically, it's a go through the waves, uh, see how long you can last, and what sort of score you can get. Because if you keep getting uh, headshots one after the other, then that increases a multiplier that mm. you're getting. Oh. It's got a global leaderboard that you can then compare with everybody. Very and cool. so, yeah, it's it's very simple, very straightforward, but was actually very, very enjoyable. Uh, I, I, I had fun playing through the demo several times, that cool. week, after all. Uh, I've got Fluffy Operation Overkill. <laughs> Fluffy. <laughs> it sells for 240 <laughs> points. It's from So So Dev Games. Uh, so it's a it's a platforming shooter, uh, kind of like you know like your you know uh, Contra. Contra, yeah, a lot like that. <laughs> um, and you're you're a squirrel in this hazmat suit. And you have to kill all the animals. So you get dropped in by this badger guy. So is there a reason why you have to kill them? Yeah, because uh, all the animals go, like, get mad cow. To get, not mad cow. They get, like, rabies. Uh -huh. Like, this virus spreads. So they become all mad, you know. So you got to go and clear out these areas. And I like it. It's very, very graphic. Um, <laughs> but it's the, the art is cutesy. 
Like, uh, really, it's just very, it's a cool, like, vibe, really good look. Um, yeah. I, I like that. It was all fun. Yeah, they are. <laughs> kind of cartoony. Yeah. Um, what, what's that mixed, one? Mixed with the, the horrific violence. Yeah, like the happy tree <laughs> friends. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Whatever. What is happy it? tree friends? Yeah. Happy tree friends. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot, not in that, not saying that, but right. kind of, you know. Uh, Along similar lines. Yeah. And then there's this zombie mode, which is, is a continuous, uh, well, zombie bears, and they're pretty gross. <laughs> There's like the bears from the game, but they're all like rotting and having like maggot, maggots in them. And that one's just a constant wave of you know <laughs> villains, and just yeah. you, you got to kill them and kind of like survive a mode. It. Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, very cool. I thought the game was really not, really cool looking. The only problem I had was uh, the controls a little flighty. Like oh, really? I, when you when you move, especially when you're trying to jump from these little levels to other levels, mm-hmm. you can. It, you kind of move a little bit after you land, yeah. and I just hate that. And a lot of games lately, I've been running into that problem. I don't know if it's my controller. Could no, be. I I, maybe. I but, guess maybe if it's sticking a little bit, because yeah, I've had that problem I've, with I, my I've had joysticks that as well. But, you know, some of them, we'll talk about platform it's here too, where it's yeah. got a little bit of that, you know, where you're like on a nice level. And you just mm-hmm. kind of just move the floaty. But that's a little in. bit. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but other than that, I, I, I liked it. 240 points, fluffy. Operation Overkill. <laughs> I took a look at Solar 2. Yeah, ah, yes. Which a sequel. It's been a long time since we talked about Solar. Mm-hmm. Um, back in the day, I looked it up and it was like 30, 40 episodes ago. Wow. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Uh, so this is the follow up to Solar. Yeah. Uh, on the XB uh, Indie Games. And it's, I don't know, it's, you're playing a planet or you're. You start off as an as asteroid. As a mass, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're a celestial body. And you're basically going around the solar system picking up other mass by, mm-hmm. you know, pulling in asteroids, which will, you can smash into, but you can have, if you go slow enough and just like hover around them, they'll orbit you. Yeah. And then you can hit the A button and the B button. I think the B button sucks in everything. Yeah. And the A button just sucks I, in the smallest I one. I should point out, you're talking about when you're an asteroid or when you're a planet. When you're an yeah, asteroid, sorry. you smash into them. I would not recommend smashing into them as a planet. No, That'll just decrease your mass, yes. actually, <laughs> until the point where you just die at yeah. some point. And then, and then eventually become a planet big enough to sustain life, and then evolution starts happening, and then these little fighters come out, and they, it's crazy. And they develop a shield and, like, defense turrets for your planet. And i got to be honest with you, I know we talked about solar and enjoyed that yeah. when we talked about it originally, but I can't remember a lot of the I don't, gameplay elements. Yeah, I don't remember all of this stuff. And, I mean, this is just a huge sandbox universe that and, you're basically flying around and in. And there are missions for you, too. And then there's missions as well. So you'll have arrows that point you in directions, and you can go to these missions points mm-hmm. and they'll tell you specific tasks to do like you know take out these other planets or take out this other system yeah which you know i wasn't anywhere near big enough right like to do what that was asking so i would just kind of went around and was yeah. trying to build up my mass before i did that yeah uh, but it looks amazing i love how the game starts yeah it just it just goes in there the and it gives you a carl sagan quote and then you have a big <laughs> bang and then it goes straight into the game no menu or anything like that no and, the, and you know there's little notices down at the bottom that tell you what to do and they progress at that point yeah as far as the tutorials just letting yeah. you know what controls do and what what your mission mm-hmm. objectives are or your objectives of playing the game which I mean, you know, there's those missions, but even if you just want to cruise around and kind of just like see how big you can get your planet mm-hmm. um, or your evolution, it's that's you can do all that too, just as yep. as gameplay. Uh, I it's think really the, well polished. The music's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it's really peaceful. Just like uh, I don't know, it's it's not techno, but it's it's just a really low level, yeah. you know, music sound effects that are going on. It's good on. for a spacey game. Exactly, mm-hmm. it is very spacey. Uh, and I know that I saw on their website you can get the. Uh, soundtrack for free oh nice so i think that's available for free and that's that's awesome. good background music yeah <laughs> so uh i don't know if i mentioned it's uh it's 400 points it is 400 points it is a five dollar game mm-hmm. which is the highest you can get i know the game he put it out on steam as well oh okay uh and it is ten dollars on steam wow um but i think there's some uh concessions made for it being five dollars on xp or uh, on the marketplace uh-huh because you, I think it's a little less as far as like performance wise. Okay. Uh, it doesn't save as often. There's a couple other bullet points I saw on their website sure, sure. that are missing from this version because right. it is you know five dollars cheaper. Um, but if you don't want to, you know, and I think they do recommend you play it on the PC. Mm-hmm. That is obviously the more superior version. Right. But I like to play things on my Xbox. Right. Right. And so uh, I'm more than happy with it at that mm-hmm. at that level. Uh, I highly recommend checking it out. Yeah. And checking out that I don't think I mentioned it was Murd. Murudai. Murudai. Is mm-hmm. that it? Murudai. M U R U D I D A I. Murudai, maybe. And 400 points. So, yeah. Check it out. Very cool stuff. Uh, I wanted to talk about them blocks. Them blocks. Is yeah, that what this and, is? yeah, unfortunately. Here's, here's my linguistic nitpick. 
You don't have a Z after a silent, uh, after a voiceless stop like a K. If it was, if it was like a game about bloggers or something like that, then it could be them blogs. Yes, <laughs> them but there's blocks. no such thing as them blocks. <laughs> But it's anyway, just blocks. <laughs> yes, exactly. See, I don't know if you know this, but the the, <laughs> the online lingo, Craig, they're replacing the S with a Z. Yeah, but that's not how it sounds. To prove their leets. It should have been an X and then a Z. <laughs> blocks. There you go. Yeah, that would have been better. Um, so this is from <laughs> GLHF Games and uh, sells for 80 points. And it's a puzzle game. And it's really quite cool one. So basically... Uh, you get despite play- your hang up about their name. I know. Yeah, <laughs> you are a linguistics teacher. I, yes, exactly. we should clarify that that you're maybe a little biased in that area. <laughs> yes, exactly. So don't take offense. No, <laughs> please don't. No, it's actually it's a pet peeve. It's actually a really fun game, and so it's a puzzle game, and you're put into like this room made out of cubes, and I like the art style. It's just like clean geometric shapes, mm-hmm. uh, and yeah, I, I highly recommend looking at the screenshots and. Um, you are like this purple block or whatever, and basically whenever you touch another block, it sticks to that side. Okay. And then and then you kind of have like this sticky aura going around you, and once you Ugh. once you, st- <laughs> well, it's like it's like little it's like a dotted line okay, yeah. that that moves around. <laughs> <laughs> I had a much different image in my head. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, no. so once you connect to a new block, then then you're. Sticky area, basically. No, no, no. Sticky aura is a lot better sticky. than sticky area. <laughs> yes. Sticky aura becomes, yeah. there you go. becomes bigger. So it goes around the other block, too. So if that block touches another block, then it'll attach there. Yes. And so the trick is that you're trying to get these blocks to these uh, spaces, these color-coordinated spaces, um, but you're trying to make sure that you can maneuver your way throughout the entire room because there's obstacles in the way and things mm-hmm. like that. And so as these blocks stick to the sides of you, then you become a new shape, and sometimes you can't fit yourself through that hole anymore. Nice. Uh, and so it requires a lot of strategy to get through. Uh, it keeps track of the number of steps that you take, so you know that's something that you can come back to, to and try to improve um there's also a little you also get a little star for each level if you eliminate all of the blocks because sometimes a a lot of rooms have more blocks than there are uh spaces to place them on Mm -hmm. uh and so you have to be basically you have to be attached to the blocks uh as you get rid of your last block and if that happens then you disappear and all of those disappear too nice nice so but that become but therein lies some of the trickiness because then you have all these extra blocks that are pointless hanging off of you uh kind of <laughs> obstructing things and yeah you know, yeah and you can reset the level just by pressing y and yeah that's what i was gonna ask cool. is there any that's way to get cool. them off of you or do you just have no to you can't drop it yeah okay. you, you have to re- you restart the room the rooms at least in the demo that i got through uh are, are fairly small so it's not like you've given up 10 minutes of your time gotcha, trying to yeah. get through there right um you know each room will probably take you about two three minutes tops okay but um yeah it's a great little puzzle game uh really nice uh aesthetic to it with the look and the the music that they have there and I, it was just a nice little twist on the sort of maneuver it, it reminded me of uh, up bot goes up okay. that i talked about yeah. an episode mm-hmm. or two ago uh but here instead of you know you actually maneuvering the blocks themselves you kind of have to carry the blocks and i i thought that was a really neat mechanic cool uh, I'm going to talk about Poopocalypse. Poopocalypse. <laughs> Sells for 80 points. It's from Wolper. Do, do we need to get you some Mylanta? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so Wolper. This doesn't involve your sticky area, does it? No. <laughs> just, okay. just my sticky aura. But uh, Wolper Tinger Games is who did it. Wolper Tinger. Um, so you're this pigeon, of course. Mm-hmm. And Obviously. Who's upset because they stop. Uh, they put up signs in the, in the park saying don't feed the pigeons. <laughs> so he gets upset and everything turns dark. And he goes up on this building. Red, doesn't it? Red, yeah. Red and silhouetted. Red and sil- yeah. I, I liked that. <clears throat> and then that's what really appealed to me about Did you the game. play it? No, I just looked at the screenshots. Yeah, whatever you played it. But it's more of like <laughs> this uh, kind of like a distance game because he, gli- he falls down and then you use your, your right stick or no, your left stick to like if you go down, he'll glide up. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. So then you just you try to glide, and then there's targets. So it's kind of like a paper airplane game. A, a little a little bit, yeah. And then um, you uh, with the right stick, that's when you poo. 
<laughs> and you get a, you get an amount of poo, but you, it builds up over time. And then you try to take out targets and just get further. And then there's these uh, what do you call them? The uh, landmarks. So like there's uh-huh. this huge church and like statues and things. Mm-hmm. And then you poo on that. I mean, it's pretty cool because because it's, <laughs> it's white. Cool. It's white on the the red silhouette, and, black, and then yeah. you have the red. It's yeah. just a really kind of simple it's like, game. It's like Pigeon Sin City. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it is totally. If Frank Miller imagined a pigeon, this is. <laughs> what that would have been. An angry pigeon. And, and he well, that's angry. what he would imagine. Exactly. Yeah. A pigeon, it, period. It would, just, off. it would be always mad and pooing on everybody. <laughs> but it's funny because they use poo, 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 and all this, like, references, but then they go a shit ton of, or a shit load of levels. And I'm like, well, you just said poo, 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 <laughs> and then you're like, shit load of levels, poo, poo, I don't know. But uh, it, I, I enjoyed it. They only allowed one. Maybe they thought maybe they thought poo load of levels, was or maybe just it was un- too silly. unlockables. I don't know. I that's, <laughs> that's where they do the line. <laughs> yeah, but with those games, uh, unlike you know, because Baby Maker Extreme and Baby Maker Extreme Two, a lot <laughs> like of those distance games, you just gotta you know, I don't buy them because I can just play the demo because that's. But maybe there's more levels. But mm-hmm. I, I like the look of it. That's what really kind of pulled me in, and the whole story beforehand is pretty cute. So <laughs> that is worth checking out. And you love poop. I do love poo. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about that. If it's called poo, you can't change Poo's who so you cute. are. Poo's cute. <laughs> oh my! I'll be talking about poo later when it's on fire from a floating one-eyed <laughs> yes. willy. But anyway, that is true. Yeah, I know. All of that you just said is true. That's going to happen. I know it is. An hour and a half happen. from now. <laughs> <laughs> hour and forty. And I minutes. can't wait. Uh, how about some fighter? Yeah, some I was going to say some some fighter, and then I stopped some S U M. But then yes. I said it again. Some fighter. Some fighter uh, on the fly entertainment. It is two hundred and forty points. Competitive puzzle game. It is a puzzle game in the style of a Tetris or a Tetris Attacks, maybe more yes, accurately. Yeah, I think that's... which has always been my favorite oh, has spot it? in my heart. The Tetris, Tetris Attacks type games. Yeah. Um, but this works with numbers. Yes. So there's a bunch of different characters you can choose from, which are all themed. Yeah. Uh, to high school. Like a, a jock. There's a nerd, nerd. A goth girl. The goth. I think the girl is a teacher. She wasn't in. The oh, demo. was she? Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Um. But it, it operates uh, on a on a field like a Tetris style game, right? Uh, but there are numbers, so there's numbered blocks, mm-hmm. and what you do is you need well, to, and, and the number equals the number of blocks that compose that shape, right? Exactly. So a lot of there's one through four, I think, is what was I. It, that, those are the that ones that are automatically one. generated. You can get more than that, though. And so what happens <laughs> is the way you clear the blocks uh, <laughs> is you match up numbers. So um, you and you have the number of blocks. So basically, a two, you would have to have two two blocks yes. to, to clear out. Hmm. Three, you'd have to have three threes touching at I least. I accidentally gave myself a seven once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's no good. And so how you do that is you add up the sum of the blocks by hit, holding down the A button and moving your cursor over. Yeah. And so if you have ones and you do three of them, it'll add up to a three block that's now connected. Right. And so you'd have to have three threes touching to clear that section right. of the blocks. Now there's an additional trick to it in that as you're uh, kind of combining blocks to get a bigger numbered block, mm-hmm. if that block is touching a another one that has a number that you get through as you're combining things. Mm-hmm. Let's say, for example, in your example with trying to create a three block. Yes. Uh, let's say there was a two block sitting next to the ones that you're combining. As you go down to combine the two, uh, the first two, then that will automatically trigger the 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 thing to set off the two. But um, and so I, I found it, it it's it's much more difficult to get the higher number ones. Yes. And so you really need to target those pretty quickly. But one thing that was really neat, especially when I just wanted to clear out some space, was um, that you when, for example, you have two two blocks and mm-hmm. they're going to eliminate. It takes a little time for that to happen. You don't have to only eliminate those two blocks. So what you can do then is like combine a whole bunch of yeah, more went, twos connected to I it. I went crazy. Yeah. Like there was one section because <laughs> and what is most prevalent on the board is a one. Ones, yeah. And ones don't clear by touching each other, no, obviously. No. So they're just there to allow you to create to bigger add. blocks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so when I had a two that was going and it kind of flashes for a minute and it waits. Yep. And I just went batshit crazy and yeah, started like here. connecting all these twos. Because every time you add a new one, it starts its timer over. Yeah. So yeah. it basically cleared out the whole section below. <laughs> with just these twos just so I could clear a bunch of space yeah. out. 
Because it does operate in the Tetra style where you can, if you make a bunch of connections, you throw things onto your opponent's board yes. that blocks them. Yeah. Uh, like and, was, you, and you also save up for your special power. For, yeah. For each character, they have a different special power that you can activate with the Y. So, so by throwing those on there or by getting those thrown on you by your opponent, there's going to be sections that are unblocked or unclearable. They're yeah. like little symbols. Difficult like I was playing play against the, uh, the jock and he was throwing footballs, footballs over yeah. on me. Uh, and and so do those eventually clear, or do they just stay there? The you know, entire I can't time? remember. I think I, they just stay. I played there. against him the first time, and then I I totally whooped him the next time that I played him. So he didn't even get to throw any footballs. But as you mentioned, yeah, there are special powers too that you build up over time, and then you hit the Y button, and yeah. it launches like a special attack on yeah. your on your opponent as well, yeah. and adds them a bunch of stuff. I think. Yeah, yeah, it causes problems for them. There are also these uh, bombs on the field. Yes. And uh, so, for example, I mentioned I accidentally created a seven block once, and I'm like, that is going to suck. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, the, basically what the bomb will do is that you can grab the bomb and drag it onto a number, and it'll clear the board of all of that number. Right. Uh, so if you get, you know, one thing that you can do is use it to clear out a large space. If, for example, you drag it onto a one or something like that. Of course, mm -hmm. I don't think it affects the opponent the same way it does when you combine things. No, mm -hmm. I don't think it gives them any negative. No, it's, it's just it, it clear just clears stuff for it. You. Yeah, but but what I found it was really useful for is like when a four or a three or a regrettable seven gets mm -hmm. <laughs> stuck over somewhere where you can't get it out, then you can use the bomb to kind of clear that out. And the Tetris attack style is because it is moving at all times up from yeah. the bottom, yeah, so it is scrolling up. Upwards and filling up. So yeah. when it gets to the top and can't move anymore, these little alarms start on the side and they start mm -hmm. going up the side of your screen. When they get to the top, it's game over. Yeah. So your goal at that point is to get your opponent in that situation before you, obviously. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, it's always moving. So yeah. I, I liked it a lot. The the it, animation it, style is really neat. It, it reminded me of Cartoon the Network. Car yeah, exactly. The cartoon. The, the is characters done. are amazing, and the music was really cool. And they start off with that nerd guy, and it immediately made me think of that Dexter's yeah. lab. Yeah, exactly. Oh. That's what they all look like. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's yeah, it was really well done. Style. The art style's nice. Yeah. Is it a local multiplayer game, or is it just a single? You, you know what? I imagine I, there, there's there got to be some kind of multiplayer, player. but there I don't know if it's player. online. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if it's online either. Huh. Uh, but there is two player. So Very cool. Check it. Yeah. yeah. That's two forty points from On the Fly Entertainment. Yes. I don't know if we mentioned that. But. I did. Okay, so that's okay. We can tell them again because it's it's really cool. <laughs> it is cool. I liked it <laughs> a lot. Um, I've got Kung Fu Fight uh, from the uh, I'm sorry, no static software. Uh, it sells for eighty points and is the retro of retro for art styles. <laughs> We're talking Atari. That's one that style. looks like Kung Fu, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It looks, but it looks like our, it looks like Atari. Oh, even better. Yeah, and uh, it's oh, a oh, it, oh, it's a oh. hilarious little game. Um, and basically, it's a side-scrolling game. Uh, it's an automatic side-scrolling game. So your character. So basically, what happens is like you're in feudal China, Japan, because they're not quite sure in the game. <laughs> <laughs> they mix them up. Yeah, and uh, okay. and uh, some overlord is maybe this is an is, alternate future stealing or history. And this overlord is stealing uh, this old guy's daughter because uh, he can't pay something or something like that. Anyway. So then uh, he strikes down the old man and then rides off and then the old man gives you a bandana that will give you power. Nice. And so and then you just start running and so you're just running towards this castle and uh, basically it, uh, the gameplay itself is really simple. Uh, I'm reminded of Get to the Chapa sure. uh, a little bit because you know you you can jump by pressing up on the the joystick. You can slide by pressing down on the joystick. You can't slide forever, but you can slide for a pretty long mm -hmm. while. Uh, and so, for example, when you first start off, you just have uh, some carts that you have to jump over and some villagers carrying, like, carrying things, and you have to slide underneath the things that they're carrying. Uh, but then also, your X button is your attack button, and so, it, you know, you can do a punch if you're just running along. You can do a sliding kick. You can do a jumping kick. Uh, and then you can kind of inter and so you're avoiding things and you're also interacting with the world um, in different ways. For example, you know, there are tables and you can choose to slide under the table or you can jump on top of the table and you can jump on top of the table and then slide on the table, which will knock everything off of the <laughs> nice. table. That's and, cool. it, and it's got its own little, you know, in-game achievement things uh, to keep track of. And uh, those are also quite hilarious. And there's jokes happening all the time. And so, yeah, so you just keep running and uh, then there are checkpoints every time you pass a Buddha statue, then... Uh, uh, that's a new checkpoint, and if you die, then you can restart there. Uh, it randomly creates the the obstacles and enemies that you have to take care of. 
Um, yeah, and there's throwing star ninjas yeah, that you have to slide and jump over their throwing stars. So later, there are these uh, dudes with big spears, and you have to watch which direction they put the spear. So if they put it up, then you have to slide kick them. If they put it down, then you have to jump kick them. Hmm. Uh, there are also these sumo guys that jump and then land, and you have to kind of watch their timing because sometimes you can slide under the sumo, and sometimes you have to wait till they land and then jump over them. And it was actually quite a bit of fun and nice music on there. And uh, like I said, very funny. Uh, and all for 80 points. I, I highly recommend checking that one out. Nice. Cool. I will. Excellent. I promise. Are you sure? No. I didn't no. think so. <laughs> I've been burned this way before. <laughs> you have. And the <laughs> scars to prove it. <laughs> Should we talk about Tick Part 1? Yes. For 240. TIC. For 240 points. I think it stands um, for something. Red Candy Games. Yep. It's a platformer. And you're uh, a robot invader who's lived after you invaded, and then more invaders come. If that's you, the, you, I don't think you're an invader. Well, because yeah, because the, all the little squirrels and the fun, the mole people, the fun, the mole people, they moved down underground, right? And then the invaders were there, and they had been there for many years, and then uh -huh. these new invaders show up. So oh, then okay. you go to investigate these invaders. Evil Corp. I don't know what's going. Which on. is coming to mine uh, oil out yeah. of the planet. But so the, there's mole people. Yes. Yeah, but the mole people. Uh, I. That's what I got from. It. I thought you were the the invaders, and then you've been living there for a long. You're time. You're much more benign that. than the invaders. Okay. At least. Uh, but then the, the invaders are all drill things, and you're like this little unicycle robot with <laughs> with a propeller on its head. With a propeller on its head. Very so it very can fly cool. around. Yeah. So you can hover. Um. You have you have like an energy meter, and so. So uh, yep. it, it'll drain as you you know keep hovering, uh, but then you can pick up red acorns, which give you a speed boost and some more energy. Yeah, you're all you're hunting for acorns. Mm. That's all you're doing. You're going down holes. Well, and and you're trying to sabotage the drilling. Would that operation. too? You sound pretty <laughs> that too. If you're just picking up <laughs> acorns, um, I agree with Craig. Well, the red ones at first I didn't know what they went with. That was the best part because I'm like, why did I keep picking these things up and they keep showing back up? Yeah, is that really the best way to save the planet? Well, <laughs> in this world, it is acorns and sabotage. Hell yeah! Okay. And then when you <laughs> and when you build up enough acorns, then you can drill into the wall, and then there's yeah. like little areas, little maze parts that you drill mm -hmm. through. Nice. Which I thought was very. Uh, it's really. I thought it was a great looking game. Oh my! I goodness. only paid I, high I, definition I, graphics on. Yeah, it. I played through till the time ran out. Yeah, but I, I purchased the game. Awesome. I really really liked it. It's nice. got three levels to it. It does say it's part one, so I'm assuming yeah. it'll go on uh, after that. But uh, I'm pretty much done with the game. I just haven't finished it. Like, I, I was going around collecting more acorns before I actually did the, the sure, actual sure. completion of the game. But, uh, yeah, so it's not, a, it's not an incredibly long game, but it is a really well-designed game and quite a bit of fun. And, you know, there are parts where you f end up flying into the air. And so then it's these whole areas where you're just trying to fly around all these spinning drill enemies yeah. and trying mm -hmm. to make sure that you have enough energy to get to the next platform and... It does. It does pretty nicely with checkpoints too. Yeah, um, I, I thought. I I, I like you, the, the. Yeah, you have unlimited lives, but you have yeah. three piece. You know, three gears of health, and mm -hmm. so uh, you have to go back to a checkpoint if you get killed. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I like it a lot. I thought the controls were really tight on it too, because a lot yes. of those games where you do those those floating and then you yeah. go back up again. Uh -huh. I I felt like I've it was really fluid, and I didn't. I felt like I was in control instead of having yeah. to double or I freak out in those kind. Which of is games. good because some of those things that you have to avoid yeah. while flying around <laughs> yeah. are, are pretty complex. And I was like, I don't want to deal with this. And then when I got to it and got through it, I just. I thought, yeah, I thought the controls were really tight on it. The graphics, I mean, it's fantastic. It's a, yeah. I think it looks amazing. Yeah, so you can collect all the acorns in, in there, and then there are also challenge modes. Uh, so you have infinite lives in the regular story mode, but I think there's one where you have a limited number of lives, and there's a mode where you have to collect, like, 100 acorns yeah. instead of, like, the 30 that are there. That's and, crazy. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and so there's, there's lots of cool stuff in there. Uh, it's a very neat, very simple, very straightforward game that's been really well designed and really yeah. well produced. And I thought, I, I thought it... For the price at 240 points, I thought that was a pretty... I mean, they could have put the $5 the stamp on yeah, that one yeah, easily. I wouldn't have been surprised to yeah. get that at $5 stamp, 400 points. Cool. Yeah. I'll yeah. check it out. Yeah. You got anything else, Jeremy? I do. Uh, how about some platform it's Temple Death? Ah, uh, yes. Another sequel. Dun, dun, yes. Dun. Uh, from Magico. Yes. Uh, 80 points. Very cool. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> so we had platform it's Castle Death. Is that what it was? Yeah, Castle Death. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Castle Pain. Castle Pain. That's I'm what sorry. It was. Yeah, Temple uh, Death. Castle Pain. And you may remember our conversation on that. It's a very base level, like. We're yeah. not. That was a while ago. <laughs> it was a while ago. Uh, very base level, like old NES game, like platforming yeah. game that is just punishing. Yes. Very much so. 
to the to the death, obviously. <laughs> uh, but now we're set in a jungle s- scenario, an and you're Jones like an theme. Indiana Jones yeah. Yeah. character, and it's just as awesome. Yeah, uh, it's a huge map. <laughs> Logs. You know, you still got the whole thing where you're like, you can pull out and see the whole screen, and everything's moving yeah. at once, and mm-hmm. that is just awesome to me. I, like I love that. that. Uh, I would take... This almost feels more complex than Castle Pain did. Yeah. But it's been a long time since I played Castle Pain, yeah. so maybe that's why. <laughs> I felt I felt like it was a little bit more, especially when you get to that, that one... Because when you're setting the torches off, and yeah. that unlocks things to move again, and then like there was one where I was like, where the fuck do I go? <laughs> and it was on a log, and you had to play, play yeah. Frogger for a little oh, bit. Oh, because yeah. fast yeah. log underneath. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and then you get hit by those little rocks that are coming off the waterfall. I made it to, like, I make it to the platform. That's what I loved about it. You yeah. make it to that platform, and you're like, ah, kunk, and I died. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? And I'm like, oh, there's little rocks coming over the waterfall. Of so course. awesome. Of you gotta course. move. You gotta keep moving. I know, yeah, I, I know, know, I know. Yeah. You're gonna die. Uh, it... And it's got I, the ghost again. It does that, have the that ghost that chases you. you, so you keep moving. Uh, yeah. uh, I do like the... I found that there was maybe more checkpoints, and maybe I'm misremembering that, but it seemed like so, there was a couple of really areas close that were yeah, each other. I, I agree. Which is good. Yeah. yeah. You know, it should it should do that. Yeah, that's so. nice. And it's got, it wasn't it, as brutal. It, it's, <laughs> it's also got its own little uh, mini achievements as well for how you complete the game or how many times you've died com- total, I guess. Yeah, because yeah. they have the bad ones, too. Like yeah. the, the flop. Yeah, whatever they were called, I can't remember. But apparently, Flop the awards. awards unlock bras. I'm not exactly sure what that's about yet. So <laughs> I'm all for awards that unlock bras. <laughs> hey, hey, yo! <laughs> Sounds about anything that unlocks bras. <laughs> Never mind about bras. Wait, what? I'm afraid of them. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This isn't like some kind of like <laughs> therapy session for you. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> People listen to this. I know. Not many, no, they but don't. they do. No, not this part, maybe. All right, all right. All right, platformance. Yes. Uh, jungle Death. Uh, 80 or points. Temple Death, I'm sorry. 80 points. I think it's a steal. We're just going to give it a new name. Every I time. Just, I've named it eight different things now. <laughs> jungle eight, Warfare. 80 points. Uh, you know, like we said before with, with the other game, it's you kind of run through it and... I don't know. It's fun. It's yeah. it's, it's yeah. definitely worth a buck for me to sit down yep. and play it. Me and too. they yeah. do a good job with them. And, and they I got w- different difficulty levels. I want more. You know, an alien one. Oh, yeah. Oh, they also have a global leader, leaderboard. Oh, yeah, that's right. They did add that. I, did, I don't remember if they had that. I don't think Castle that they Pain. did. Neither do I. Yeah. Well, I don't like that. <laughs> Why? I suck. Was it time based, I guess? <laughs> uh, maybe both. Like time your time and death. Yeah. yeah. 45 times, I think I died in that first little part of the you demo. You suck. Well. <laughs> but I bought it right off the bat. Well, there you go. <laughs> you know, I I love those games that come out. You know, that are just like you already expect it, and yeah, yeah. I love it. Excellent, it's beautiful. Uh, I think maybe our last indie game for this week, uh, this episode, Lair of the Evil Doer, mm-hmm. uh, sells for eighty Evil points Doer. from Going Loud Studios. It's essentially a twin stick shooter, um, and it reminded me actually, it's a bit of a dungeon crawler too. It reminded me of Epic Dungeon in mm-hmm. for some nice. re- reason. Uh, and so you are an experiment created by this mad scientist, uh, Doctor Odious, I believe. Yes. And, uh, he doesn't really think very highly of you, and so he's just going to dispose of you, and so you're fighting your way out of his lair. He's very condescending. He's, he's hilarious. It is. It's funny. <laughs> it's so funny. And, and yeah, uh, at, when I first looked at it, I'm like, oh, it's a shooter. I'm like, ah, I'll, I'll give it a try, but I wasn't too keen on it. But I love it. I think cool. I've picked it up, and I just, I've been continuing to play it, and it's, it's a lot of fun. It's very humorous. Uh, there are some really neat aspects to it. So, for example, um, you have a pistol, which is a limited ammo. You have to reload, but unlimited ammo. You have, like, a, a melee weapon, and then you also have a primary weapon, mm-hmm. um, which can be a variety of different things. I just picked up this razor gun that shoots, like, these uh, razor or these uh, saw blades out that bounce around the hallways awesome. or whatever. But uh, whenever a new item drops or, you know, a new weapon, you can just go over there and hold the left trigger, and it'll compare the two weapons and nice. it'll, like, show you what stats are better for each one and so you can just make a decision uh and which is great and yeah it's it's a really fun game and it's got a uh it's really well done i thought the the targeting system was pretty good yeah i didn't i didn't have any issues with that at all uh it was i mean you target with the right stick you kind of move around you move with the left stick you target around with the right fire with the right and then fire with the trigger so it almost melee with the right bumper yeah exactly so everything's in in you know 
right pattern i guess yeah. i should say the layout's really nice yeah. uh everything felt comfortable mm-hmm. um i had a great time with it and it's it almost it operates like a dungeon crawler yeah because you, know? you also level up and you can add stats to yourself yes yeah, that whole rpg element to yeah. it and and you do level up and you go into your stats and you can give yourself strength or dis- dexterity or endurance yeah and up all those different stats and mm-hmm. areas now i didn't see one of them had like at the bottom i think it was your dexterity or maybe your endurance where it built up your health mm-hmm. but it also had like a mass rating oh yeah and i wondered if you like you started putting a bunch of stats in there i wonder if it's oh, going to change your character it's for knockback uh because oh, okay that, cause, that helps because i saw that on a loading screen i think that, i wanted to that make one, your guy fat once once <laughs> <laughs> once that oh, not dude. only increases your health but also decreases the amount of okay, knockback cool. you suffer that makes sense yeah and so then there's like all these little zombie things that are attacking you and mm-hmm. then crazier enemies start to appear later in the game. It's it's really quite and good. And you're also, cool. I mean, the whole dungeon crawling aspect of it, you're opening doors and you can't see what's on the other side of it if you haven't been into the area right. yet. So you have this like little flashlight almost that yeah. kind of comes out from you. And so you open the door and you walk in and you all of a sudden like these dudes are coming out at you. <laughs> Very cool. And you don't see them until you walk into that area. Yeah. So you kind of have to go in ready to go, yeah. which is kind of funny in that aspect of a game I yeah. guess because I like not being able to see what's ahead of you yeah it's kind of cool I'm guessing there's like around 18 levels or whatever because that seems to be as many floors as there are yeah um, and and if you are playing the demo, I do actually recommend trying to play through the entire demo because uh, the end of the demo is quite funny they they have given it a specific end oh very um, cool Oh, did they? Yeah. I don't know. I didn't even see that. You kind of have to push through. Like, you have to get, like, to floor 16 or something. It was funny because, I mean, the demo was set up actually, you know, definitely as a demo. Because even the wording that was put in there, he's like, you know, we've only got eight minutes to do this. So (laughs) let's do this stuff. Yeah, I like that Which was really funny. It was clever. Yeah. Yeah. So I I really recommend that one. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Cool. Cool. I'll have to check that out. How's the cover on that one? Uh does it look good? How's the cover? Uh, Maybe that's why I didn't stop at it. It's got a kind of hand-drawn mad scientist dude. He's got a big block face and an arrow remember. for a nose. All right. And goggles. I want to check that out. You Layer sure? of the Evil Doer. Yes, yes, sir. It's a good title. Is that it for indie? That's it. There's a lot of indie games. It is a lot. 13 or 12 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, a ton. And a we ton. got a lot to go yet. XBLA, let's do it. Let's do it, gents. Adventures of Shuggy. 800 points, I believe. I've forgotten. Um, <laughs> uh, I be- yeah, no, I'm, I'm almost positive it's 800 points. Adventures of Shuggy is a platforming puzzler um, and is a lot of fun. Essentially, the here's the story. You're this little vampire dude, Shuggy. You just inherited a mansion from your uncle, but it turns out it's haunted. <laughs> and so uh, as you come in, like things are going crazy. And so you're trying to just kind of get the house back in order. And you do this by going into 116 different puzzle rooms Yikes. and uh, solving them all. Uh, and and then there are also four bosses that you can fight. Um, and it it's pretty spectacular. The demo actually, the demo gives you an idea of kind of what's in store, but it it really undersells the game because you know the demo levels are all very early levels. Mm-hmm. I think it may have been a good idea for them to show maybe some of the more advanced levels uh, to the players because you know an experienced platformer and ex- uh, player an experienced puzzle player uh, like myself is going is going to have not a whole lot of difficulty getting through those initial right, rooms. Yeah. And so it may seem like it's kind of dull, uh, but they change up a lot of things. And one of the things that I really liked about the game is that there are all these different mechanics, like each, not each room, but the, you know, there are a variety of mechanics, things like, Uh, In the demo, you'll experience like rotating the room around, uh, Mm -hmm. which changes gravity essentially. And so you have to watch out that you don't drop yourself on spikes or something. Uh, There's also, let me think of some other ones. Uh, There's ones where you control multiple shuggies. And so you switch between, and your right trigger is basically always your action button for the level. Basically, whatever you need to do, it's the right trigger, which is really handy that it's all mapped on that one button. Um, but you know, the right trigger in that case will go between different shuggies. And there are some levels where you kind of have to make sure that you're keeping all your shuggies alive because, you know, they have different enemies coming at them. Um, and my favorite mechanic, my favorite mechanic of them all, I like, I like almost all of them a whole lot, but my favorite one are the rope rooms where you get a magic rope. Like you go over to this winch and you grab this rope and you can use it to kind of swing around things and you can wrap it around stuff and use it to uh, pull gears. And then like, if you pull the right trigger, then it pulls tight and then you can climb up or down it. Uh, You can rappel down walls with it. And uh, as long as it doesn't touch spikes, then it'll just keep extending forever. (laughs) And it's hilarious to just kind of wrap it around every block. (laughs) That's, you know, every platform that's there. (laughs) And, And you got the, like this, tangled cat's cradle across the room 
<laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, uh, I really like those. The only mode that I didn't care so much for was zombie, uh, the zombie mechanic. So you go into some rooms and Shuggy becomes a zombie and you can't control him anymore. You can only control his jumping. Mm. Uh, and so if you press the A button, then it'll start a little power meter that'll be going up and down for his jump ability. So mm-hmm. you have to not only time when you jump but you have to time like how much power he has jumping it reminded me a lot of uh what was that game luminicity or something like that that uh i think lucas arts came out with like a year and a half ago two years ago where the little girl was just continually moving forward yeah. and you had to place stuff in front of yeah. her like yeah yeah shoes what... and whatnot yeah and i yeah, and shoes. i learned in, i learned in that game that i just don't like not being able to control my character well yeah. and then it sounds maybe degree. a little bit like in limbo when you would get possessed yeah oh yeah oh, i forgot that happened you had the little brain the yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 march you the other way yeah but this 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 had a lot more perils in yeah, yeah. in store uh and, and so i only didn't like it just because i just get frustrated with those right. things but uh, uh, but otherwise, I really liked all the modes. The boss battles, some of the boss battles were pretty simple. Uh, uh, you know, overall, they weren't horribly difficult, but they were a nice little change up yet again. And and that's one of the things I really like, that each room you go into, you know, you get something a little bit different. And you kind of mm-hmm. get an idea yeah. of what mechanics will be in the room before you go in. And so, you know, if you want to play, if you're sick of playing you know the the rope rooms and you can go find something that's not a rope room and and, right and play something else and uh i thought that was really i I thought it was really cool i got through all 116 rooms like i was really getting into playing it and it you know keeps leaderboards um and so for each room for time trials and so you know if you want to go back and improve your times you can do that Mm -hmm. um yeah it's a it's a really good game if you like puzzle platformers i definitely recommend checking out the demo and i definitely recommend giving it a little more credence than maybe the demo would give you uh because it may seem a little simple at first but some of those rooms are damn challenging (laughs) holy (laughs) shit especially if you're trying to go for some of those achievement things because three of the rooms have a a special achievement tied to them for kind of doing it in a non-standard way Mm -hmm. and uh it can be a little tricky uh but uh but very fun and you know i stuck to it the entire time i should try that demo Shuggy. You, yeah, you should. Yeah, I don't know why I hadn't. I know why. I know why. <laughs> How about some Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalkers? If we must. 2012. <laughs> uh, and I will tell you right now, <laughs> Space I, Odyssey. I apologize because <laughs> I forgot to make any notes for this game. Oh, no. And so I'm going off of memory. And that, as you can see when we get to this game's, uh, is full of about nine other games right now. <laughs> so I'm a little fried, so I will do my best, and I feel terrible. You should. For my Magic the Gathering folks. So I, well, I'm just clearing myself so that people don't yeah, like yeah. yell at me and go, I can't believe you don't remember the name of this mode. OMG. <laughs> oh my god, you guys suck. Yeah. Why do you hate Magic? <laughs> uh, so... There are improvements over the last uh, edition of this game that mm-hmm. you know from last year. It is 800 points, uh, which I will say right now is an awesome price point. Ten dollars is, yeah. I think, under the cost of a starter deck now, okay. like a current starter mm-hmm. deck. So it's like if you want to learn how to play Magic or start playing yeah, Magic, that's a good point. This is the easiest way to get into no, it. That's and a very learn. good point. Yeah, it's an awesome way to do it, and you get a whole bunch of decks that you can mess around with and learn. You know, you do sacrifice any kind of deck building. But that's only going to add more money if you want to get into. And that actually, stuff, deck building so. deck building is a more advanced stage. Exactly, it's not a way to learn games. This yeah. is just a brilliant way to like open the door. Yeah, for no, people. that's good. Um, it, it it plays a lot like the first game. Uh, it is set up a little differently. It is a lot more. Uh, it, it's done a lot smarter this time around. Mm-hmm. Uh, now you'll go in and you'll start with a deck or two. I think it was two decks you could use at the beginning, and you're fighting against opponents. And in the last game, what it was is basically just a list of like. 15 decks and you you could only start with the first one you fought them if you fought them you unlock the next one you fought that next person and then essentially from there on after you got through everybody you could just go in at any time and you know play any of those people Uh kind of works the same way here but it's done a little differently where it's on a map Mm -hmm. uh or like it's drawn out uh horizontally uh so you go through and you can fight somebody at the beginning but then it kind of branches off and there's two different opponents you can have. So if you, you can go fight either of these guys, mm-hmm. which it doesn't matter, really. I, I guess it just gives you another option as far as one more person. Mm-hmm. Uh, but eventually you'll still need to fight everybody, I think, or you'll want to, to unlock their decks. But you can get through the end of the game by just 
fighting this person and now it unlocks to the middle one again and you can play that person so I you see. could skip that other third person if you wanted to but they also incorporate... so you can kind of tailor how you go through the yeah game. i guess so but i mean you really want to you you unlock decks by beating the people right. so and then you unlock cards for those decks but you by... can get to decks that maybe you want to play more correct you could get to sooner. a sooner yeah, yeah instead of having to go through everybody right uh but the problem is you don't really know what the decks are until you get to them, I guess. Because uh, I don't think you can look at them. That's true. Thanks, Internet. <laughs> um, but they incorporate You're the welcome. challenges. <laughs> the last game, the last game uh, had challenges as well, and I talked about. This game also has the challenges again, but they incorporate them into that story mode or that, that progress mode. So mm -hmm. now there's little offshoots in the path that are the challenges. So those open up as you go along. Mm -hmm. And they start off really easy. Uh, and then there's a couple medium ones and a couple hard ones. And they are a little more involved than the last game. The last game was mostly just, okay, it's your turn. You have to do this much damage or do this. Uh -huh. Now, uh, a couple of the rounds were, okay, you got to defend from an attack and then on your turn, kill them. Mm -hmm. So it was a couple, you know, it's two two right. moves basically, or, you know, two rounds of play. Uh, there was another one though that was even on this one that you just started in your turn and had to end it. So, but they varied up a little bit more this time around. Um, and that's the main gameplay. There is also a couple different modes. There's, uh, and this is where I'm going to fall apart, and I and I feel terrible because I can't remember what the name of them are. It's like revenge or vengeance or something like that. Is the second gameplay mode, and that is you and you can play with multiple people. You can play with two other uh, players mm -hmm. with you, or you can play with two CP CPU players, which are terrible. Uh, <laughs> And if you play with the, the the computer, they do not help you very much at all. But you play three people against one. And so you're playing against the computer. And the one guy has these other situational cards that happen every round. Uh -huh. And he plays them. And they they are huge douche cards that like <laughs> hurt everybody that you're playing. Right. Like all of right. your teammates. And so he gets the advantage at that point. Right. And it's ridiculous. And i don't know it seemed overpowering to me yeah. but i think that's probably the challenge of yeah. it yeah. and i think it'll help if i have some other people that i play with i just haven't gone on and i have a bunch yeah. of people on my friends list that have the game i just need to get on and play yeah. with some other people the world of warcraft game has similar things i think those are their raid decks uh, yeah where they go up against a big dragon or whatever and actually <laughs> verse the versus card game had a galactus set that was basically oh yeah that's right thing, so you'd play it that way yeah so there's a whole bunch there's a whole mission of that as well where there's yeah. a ton of different people that's you cool. have to play through and that's that's going to extend it a long time for me as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's that. and then there's another mode which is uh, I can't remember what it's called. That might be the vengeance one or the revenge one. <laughs> and I think you're going through and playing those people again, but I think they've tuned up their decks, yeah. So they're a little tougher. Mm -hmm. I think is how that plays out. Uh, I was concerned about the ad adding to your deck or subtracting to your deck because in the last iteration of the game, mm -hmm. you could only subtract those cards out that you unlocked. Mm -hmm. So it was like 17 cards that you could either add in or take out, and that was it. Yeah. Uh, now you can you can you always have to have sixty cards in your deck, right. but you can subtract anything that's in the base deck. Cool. So the unlocked cards that you get, you Very can add cool. those in and take out some of the other right. lame ones that you don't want. Right. Because be before it was either don't add new cards or go over sixty cards. Correct. Which is less efficient. <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> exactly. cool. It is cool. Uh, you, that was kind of what you wanted. Kinda. You still can't manage the land. Yeah, sure. It's automatic. Oh. Like it's an automatic percentage based on the number of cards you have in your deck. So you can't like mm. cut down on the land huh. if you wanted more character cards or something uh the decks are awesome they seem a lot of fun uh i've only got to play with a couple of them but they're tuned so well it seems harder this time around like when i was Ooh. going against the computer because the decks are just so tight like yeah. some of them are just they're ridiculous the way that they play off of each other but some of them are just so awesome there's like a vampire deck that's really cool where all the cards just play off of each other and it's balanced so well there's an all artifact deck that is really well done there's just so many decks that are just really tight hmm. and so i've been having a blast with it cool i've been playing a lot awesome. and there's achievement or avatar awards shirts <laughs> speechless i know i'm about speech <laughs> <laughs> no that's great that's awesome but again, I, you know that that sounds more appealing to me than the first go round just because you know I don't know. The, just your sale on it, I guess, is what I'm more well, I intrigued by. I think that the first one would still be, it's the same kind of deal. Yeah. It's just that this seems a little laid out better. Mm -hmm. I did have some issues with the print looks a little smaller to me, but mm -hmm. I've gotten used to it. But initially when I started it, things are in a little different location. I played the last one so much. Whatever, old man. I know, exactly. <laughs> it's totally what it is. Where, Get out of the bifocals. I kind of like the layout of the last one a little better because yeah. they kind of, all the different uh, turn modes were still labeled on there and now they only show you the current mode that you're in hmm. they show like dots that represent how many more modes there are oh, okay. but they don't have the actual mode names which i think were always 
present in the other one. I think that's better learning if you're learning. Sure. I think it's better to have them all laid out there, but I think you pick it up as you go along. Cool. If you've ever had an interest in magic or wanted to and you were intimidated, I think this is the way to go. Yeah, no, that's a good Definitely jump into these games because not only do they give the tutorials, but they give them at the right times. If you start learning magic from a rule book, you're reading 40 pages of information you may not need. Yeah. This is all situational, so it comes up and gives you the information as you need Very it. Cool. And everything is there. It's like you pull up a card, and if you hit the bumper button, it'll tell you uh, like the abilities that are associated with that card, and it's all right there at that time. Mm-hmm. Like, so here's what you need to know specifically about this. Mm-hmm. And that, to me, is just the way to learn this game because there's so many little intricacies, and you need them laid out like when you need them. Yeah, and like you said, it's a really good price point to ten bucks to pick yeah. up a game. I highly recommend it. Dive cool. into you know. Uh, you should buy it, Sean. <laughs> you know what else people and should Craig. buy? What? Trenched. 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 Tell me For about 1200 it. points, the last of Double Fine's uh, downloadable titles, uh, gotta, at least until they find another publisher or uh, distributor. I don't know what the term is. I got to tell is. you, I played the demo. Yeah. So did I. Uh, I really liked it, mm-hmm. but I had so much going on. <laughs> and I had so many games sitting there. All I'm hearing is white noise right that now. That I want to play it. Excuses, excuses. So tell me about excuses. it, Craig. You know, if you had asked me like a year ago if I thought like within the span of like two months <laughs> would we get two XBLA titles that uh, are centered around uh, bipedal mech warfare games, <laughs> um, I would have said no. Yeah. Uh, and and if, that you would buy both of them. And, <laughs> and that I would buy both of them. And, that, <laughs> and then if you asked me uh, also, <laughs> do you think that those two games would, uh, despite their similarities, Similarities be uh, vastly different enough and equal in uh, awesomeness. I, I probably also would have said no, but I would have been wrong at, at this day yes. and time. And you probably would have been like, "Why are you even talking to me? <laughs> are you, you trying to tell me theories? something?" <laughs> I'm upset that I even played this demo because I don't want to buy it. <laughs> it's really, like really good. Fears. So, so yeah, I mean, Gatling Gears came out recently, mm-hmm. and we've been singing the praises of oh, Gatling yeah. Gears. And can I mention also that it's ten dollars now? It's Oh, Gatling Gears know, is ten dollars. I don't yes. know if it went to a sale or if it went. No, I know. Like, yeah, permanent decrease. Yeah, I don't know, but you, yeah, people should check that. That's out. just a side note. Sorry. You know, it, I feel bad. It I bought might, it a week ago. I, it <laughs> probably be the timing would. I don't. Would, do that. I don't. It might be the it timing might, would It might be. It might. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. They might have you know? thrown it on sale because <laughs> whenever I load up the the dashboard, it's always sitting right there next to the ad for Trenched. Is that little you know, thing for eight hundred points for Gatling Gears? That's yeah. a good call. But. uh and so, despite despite the similarities of the bipedal so, mech, it's all a joke. <laughs> but despite those similarities, the games actually feel vastly different. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I agree. mean, of course, Trenched has its uh, uh, tower defense aspects mm-hmm. to it, but you know, even that's not. You know, I wouldn't call it necessarily a tower defense game. It is. You're protecting things, but you're so much in the fray. I kind of got the feeling from this that was more what you wanted Toy Soldiers to be. Yes. I mean, there you I, go. I ended up liking Toy Soldiers, but it right. took me a while to warm up to but it. But your initial I'm reaction not... to it was what this game made me feel like when yes, you're playing it. Like exactly. You're totally in it. Yeah, because what I liked about Toy Soldiers was that you could actually put yourself in there and mm-hmm. take a little more control. Um, and, but there is still a lot of tower defense management, right. uh, that, you know, so you're basically jumping back and forth between two different modes is what it felt like. Um, this on the other hand feels much more like, uh, Monday night combat yeah, yeah. yeah, where yeah, you yeah. are constantly in there and, and actually the action feels at least as equal to the tower defense, if not maybe a little more important. Yeah. I would say it's even flipped from the toy yeah. soldier scenario where it's like, the other things are what you just throw on there and like don't worry about them too you, much. Don't get me wrong. You need you, yeah. need, you need your <laughs> turrets. You need to upgrade your turrets. You need those defenses. The uh, Monday Night Combat was an awesome. It, it just dawned that, on that, me that, as that I was talking. Really well. yeah. um, God, I, I missed that, that game. game. We, I barely played it. We, we need to get something together on the Let's forum. Do that. Yeah. But anyway, um, I, I really uh. want to talk about Trench right now, though. <laughs> okay. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. And so it's double fine, so it's got all the humor and the awesomeness and the incredible design elements to it. One of the things that I really like most about it, actually, um, is the the weapon reloads like all the weapons look differently and mm-hmm. you know and so there's a whole variety of weapons you got machine guns you got shotguns you got uh grenade launchers you got sniper cannons you got artillery cannons you got these things called broadcasters oh i guess i should tell you a bit of the story here but <laughs> i dug the story <laughs> but uh, it pulled me in right yeah so essentially it's it starts off around world war one yeah. and uh you know this dude gets his legs run over professor but, x but uh he he so, gets Professor X. So he has to. Is that what happened to Professor X? 
I'm just saying there's there's a good guy He's and got a, a bad wheelchair. guy. There's a good guy and a bad guy. They're both in wheelchairs. Magneto is in a wheelchair. Wow. The <laughs> guy entrenched has mental powers, right? No. Oh. Uh, I'll just dang keep, it. I'll keep derailing you if that's where you want to go. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Story. <laughs> So, I like the story. so he gets reassigned to, to do this radio work with like this other dude, and then all of a sudden this broadcast happens, and it kills everybody except those two. And it, but it affects them, and so he becomes really smart and invents these uh, these legs, basically legs for uh, disabled mm-hmm. soldiers like himself. Uh, but then later they get turned into uh, the trenches, the the mobile trenches, um, and that that's a great little riff on World War One war tactics because mm-hmm. you know the whole the only way to get hurt in the trench is to get out of the trench mm-hmm. and and so and so they made it easier by adding like a bar and like a restroom and, <laughs> and all these things to the trench and now it can walk around on its own um and then the other guy invented television um <laughs> but this is like super evil television yes. and these television monsters but uh yeah, so the tubes, the tubes, the monotubes, yes. yes, and they come in different varieties, and they all have uh, little names that are little uh, puns with uh, television aspects. Anyway, so uh, you have all these different weapons, and uh, you know you also have different chassis for the. You can change. You can customize pretty much everything about the mech. You can customize the the paint color, Sean. Very cool. <laughs> uh, the chassis, the legs. Hey, I love that about and, Gallon and, Gears. And uh, the paint color. The paint color is only um, cosmetic, but everything else has an effect. Like the different chassis, there are assault chassis that allow you to carry much bigger weapon loadouts. Nice. Uh, but you carry fewer you turrets, go. and it restricts the number of turrets that you can, or the kinds of turrets that you can carry. Um, and then, I heard there was a ton of customers. And then there's the engineering chassis, which have like very few weapon loadouts, but carry like the full complement of turrets and can carry things like the heavy turrets, like the mine layers and the the mortar turrets. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, and then there's kind of some that are in the middle ground. Then there are different kinds of legs. So the bipedal legs, and then you can get some with like a sprinting ability, and some like there are these tripod legs that can hunker down and will fortify you or allow you to reload quicker. Uh, there are these quadruped legs, which are great because you're kind of galloping along like a horse. That's awesome. Uh, that smash down on the ground and sort of stun or damage enemies around you. And uh, yeah, and so there's all this customization, choosing which, and then of course choosing which uh, turrets you want to bring to the level. Um, and and so there's so many tactics, and this is where it really separates itself from. Uh, Gatling Gears, because it's not really the the fact that you're in the action that separates from Gatling Gears. That's actually one of the things that I like about mm-hmm. both games. Yeah. But with Gatling Gears, it was so much arcadey action, and you're dodging yeah. the bullets, and you're dancing around the screen trying to get your multiplier up. Mm-hmm. And this has a completely different feel to it. It's all about tactics and planning your timing and trying to you know uh, eliminate enemies as far out as you can. Uh, you know and and plan ahead for things and, you know, use your scrap wisely to upgrade and buy new turrets. And uh, fantastic. And and then, 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 on top of that, uh, the thing has up to four-player co-op. Um, and I, I have gotten in. Player. I have gotten into a regiment, and we just recently got our fourth player in there. Nice, and it is chaotic and <laughs> insane and awesome. Because then it almost becomes like a squad-based game. Yeah, where like some guy, you know, someone will be like, oh, "I'll be the engineer this time," so they'll be carrying like the the important turret loadouts uh, that we need, and then you know somebody will be the assault person to take on any of the mini bosses nice. that come walking down, and 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 yeah, and so then you're just shouting out hey we need a new turret over here or we need an upgrade and yeah uh and so can anybody like is it all communal at that point like for the team like yeah. as far as like upgrading the things i'm sorry I'm oh ahead. okay so what happens is uh when in it's different between the two the two situations there's the carrier which is basically the big lobby menu okay and then uh there's the battlefield itself on the battlefield actually Things become a little leaner. You have to really strategize well the more players you add because you have more firepower now and you know more bodies and more brains on the field. Right. But uh, the scrap that you pick up, which are these little televisions that the enemies drop, yeah. uh, the scrap that you pick up gets divided evenly amongst everybody. Oh, okay. So you know, you know, if you have four players, yeah, you got four different people blasting away at the enemies, but you also get one fourth of the scrap that you okay. would get playing by yourself. Um, and so, and so you find that you can lay fewer turrets or you have to be more selective about gotcha. your turret okay. laying than you are in like single player. You can't do like a switch off on money or on no. scrap. Nope. Okay. Nope. 
That'd um, be awesome to dish that off onto your engineer. <laughs> yeah. You know. But then at the end, you know, everybody gets their own XP. Everybody gets their own money. Uh, they can go shopping for upgrades and things. Nice. And then there, on top of that, like sometimes enemies will drop these loot boxes, and then at the end of the level, you'll get. You, I think I think there are a few standard weapons and upgrades that you earn it for each level, but then there are also these, these random things from the loot boxes, and there are rare and like super rare items that are signified by like a green and a purple outline on them as I'm well. In. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you ass, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and some of them are fantastic. I mean, uh, they're they're Don't tell me that shit. It's just ridiculous the amount of stuff. And so that that turns into an extra fun thing when you're playing multiplayer. Uh so so with my regiment I should mention, so these are all forum members. We got Vandic, uh Phil the guy and yeah, that guy's uh, not a forum member. <laughs> no. And actually. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. No, he ran away. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Havoc <laughs> uh Havoc and Chaos uh uh, so it's it's hilarious because you know someone will pick up like a special weapon and then they'll be showing it off like the next level and like everybody will be like super freaking Ooh, out <laughs> ah. exactly and then we're all like I want one of those it's kind of like the Borderlands it, scenario where it it's is. like look at this gun I just got that's exactly what it is it shoots a fireball that's exactly what it is <laughs> that's exactly what it is um and uh, and then on top of that. On, it's, see, I, there's just so much in here. Yeah, yeah. On top of that, you have your own personal stats. Uh, so it's got the challenges, which is basically a stat tracker, and then it levels up every once in a while, and that gets you unlocks of money or new weapons or things for your your marine because you can dress up your marine in funny clothes. Too. Nice. Um, and this and, game appeals to me. And then, Does. but then on top of that, you have your regiment. Yeah. Stats. And so what that is is that. That's the the four you know the people that you've been playing multiplayer with, and uh, what happens is so your your normal stats go into there too, and the numbers are always higher, and you earn money and you earn awesome uh, weapons and mm-hmm. upgrades and things like that from there. But the, what's really awesome is that um, basically every time you turn on to start the game up, uh, if you if the people who are in your regiment, the, basically the last uh, multiplayer people you were playing with, have played since then automatically their stats will increase based on what they've given you or, you know, what they've achieved in that oh. intervening time. Wow. So you don't even, I mean, you don't even have to continue playing with these multiplayer people in order to continue increasing the regiment stats. That's awesome. Uh, and so, yeah, th- that's really cool. If you go to the leaderboards, you can actually look at everybody's last mech that they built and used and how they decorated it and <laughs> the weapons they have on it. You can look at their oh, marine. Man. <laughs> It's 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 fantastic and the, and so the lobby. Let me talk a little bit about the lobby. It's this uh, big carrier. Let's it's, all go. It's an aircraft carrier. Let's go. Uh, but it also has its own legs. Um, <laughs> I love that about that aircraft carrier. I was like, what is this taking place? And, stood on and then it just yeah. like crushed it. I'm like, all right, this is awesome. Yeah, and and so style. what's great is that you know when uh, people finish out uh, the level and maybe you just blitz through your stats and whatever you got, you don't care about looking at. But somebody's mm-hmm. taking a long time. You don't have to wait for everybody. You can just come back to the carrier, and then your mech will load up, and you know the other bays will be empty. And you can run around, and there's a radio room which allows you to connect to different people. It can do a random search if that's what you want, or you can use it to look at your friends list or invite the party to it. Uh, and then there's the the mission searching, and uh, uh, and you can actually go over to each other's mechs and look at what they have loaded on there, and sure. uh, you know be that's like, cool. what is this gun, and and be checking out the specs on it and and things like that, and. Uh, And then basically uh, a lot of us will just be running around waiting for somebody to finish out in the shop, like selling extra things or, you know, uh, outfitting their mech perfectly. And then uh, each of the different hats that you put on your Marine does like a different salute if you pull the right trigger while you're on there. And so, you know, we're just running around doing dumb shit, you know, just like there's nothing wrong with that. Doing like thumbs up. A, A, A. I don't know if you know, but Sean and I made our horses dance on Red Dead Redemption one time. Like, <laughs> we were all supposed what? to be playing. Yeah, everybody was doing something in like a fort, and me and Jeremy were dancing horses. <laughs> it was good times. Awesome. We're helpful. Anyway, um, I barely talked about the game. Uh, I, I think, no, I think you've I, covered, I've talked about a lot of the yeah. elements to it, but... Yeah. It's it's fantastic. I I I mean, it works really like a tower defense it. force game, right? Where you have yeah. waves of enemies yeah. that yes. come out, yeah. and so between your party and you mm-hmm. and the turrets that you throw up, uh, you basically are taking down the enemy before right. they get to your source that you're protecting. Exactly. Yeah. That's pretty much the gameplay. And then you get you know, there's a bronze, silver, and gold medal. Yeah. And some and some of the gold medal ones, you're probably going to need to play multiplayer in order to yeah. get the gold medal, um, if you want to do it, especially with the bosses, because the boss. The bo- for the bosses, it's a time limit. 
Um, and so, you know, you have to defeat them within a certain time limit. And I, th I think that's going to really require the bosses are hilarious, though, because you can really unfortunately, you can really use the same tactic every time. What we do is we get like the biggest chassis we have load on the biggest artillery guns, grab the tripod legs, and then we hunker down and just keep launching <laughs> artillery yeah. into it as fast as we can until until it dies. Um, and so that works pretty well in the first two bosses. I don't know how it's going to do on the third boss, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's been our strategy so far, but it's still a lot of fun to do that. Just cool. be blasting away. I had I had fun in the demo. I thought I at very at the very beginning I was like, this looks like it's going to be slow, and I really love the movement of the game. It's very fluid, like yeah. your character, just your your mech or mm -hmm. your trench, the trench. Yeah, I should be calling it. The yeah, trench. that thing I thought was going to be hunker and just like slow moving tongue dunk yeah. it's not and it's very fluid i just well, it, it depends really it depends good. on your loadout actually I, I could imagine that too as yeah. you get further down but that makes sense to me yeah exactly um but it's for logical. the for the very first one in the tutorial the way that they send you through that um you know show you your button layout and things yeah. like that and what to do i thought, I that, thought was that was very nice. helpful and fun the guy was like oh if you want to look down there you gotta squint your eyes a little bit and right. then you had to hit the x and then you yeah. you know i thought that was <laughs> it was done really cool the 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 design is fantastic for it i yeah. love it i just the i thought they did a good job with it and, and it's I'm, double fine and I mean, i'm speaking on behalf of i wish the, they'd make a good game yeah exactly <laughs> i'm speaking on behalf <laughs> of the rest of my regiment here but uh we had no problem going back and replaying things very I mean, cool we would go back and replay things for uh you know gold medals but in addition, you know, because at first it was just me and Phil the guy, and then Vandick joined into our regiment, and so then we went back and we played through those early levels with Vandick, and then you know we kept we replayed some of them to get gold, and then and now you know we've added Havoc and Chaos, and so we're going back and replaying a bunch of those levels, and it's just it's still a ton of fun even to go back and replay levels because now you have more strategy and you're really trying to own on the <laughs> the the <laughs> tubes and right. you know come out on top and get as much scrap as you can and uh it, it's a good time it's a really good time cool cool it's like a party game almost <laughs> no the I, the multiplayer is fantastic i i played a bunch of the single player but man i've just been so excited about the multiplayer that's good word so i'll gonna... probably be buying it yeah good. it looks like i'm gonna too <laughs> whatever we have the d-bags the d-bag the uh, regiment well, we'll have to do something. Yeah, we'll have to team up and have somebody else. We'll have to find two more people. No. <laughs> just the two? Yeah. It's just the D-bag. <laughs> That's not good. We can find two more I people. I can't join your regiment. You guys you can join it for like can. a week or something. That'd so. be three. We won't get it for four weeks. So we'll need yeah, one more person. And I'll be done by then. I won't, I'll have played through it twice. I won't play it. <laughs> I'll buy it, but I won't play it. Any avatar words in that one? Uh, yes. There's a t-shirt, and then there's a small trenchy. A okay, little, never mind. A little it's mech done. that dances around you, basically. That is... There's three, actually, isn't there? Well... No, so there's a mask too. I thought. No, I don't think. There's no, a that, mask. I think that mask was from a different. Game. Oh, okay. There, there are I two. There are three, but you know, it's the whole female male yeah, shirt. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Yep, yep. Talk about some Bulletstorm DLC. Yes, Blood Symphony. Do. I didn't play that. It came with two uh, new Echo maps: uh, the the monorail and some street mean streets or something like that. And then there's three for the multiplayer. I didn't play the multiplayer stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but in a, in a, in a true Sean fashion, I want to admit the fact that the whole echoes part of that game. Yeah. Not too familiar with it. What? And I thought that was awesome. <laughs> it was like a new game for me. You own the game. I know I own the game. Okay. Okay. I, it I, echoes I, on the demo. Yeah, I mean, Echoes is just running through yeah, the level. Yeah, it's just running through the level and just getting a score as high as possible. It's, yeah. It, yeah, it's just those big parts yeah, of the yeah, campaign. Gotcha. The arcadey you know, part. The, yeah. Um, and I I knew about the one part of the Echoes and I checked it out once, but I didn't know that there was multiple like slots mm -hmm. to play a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, Blood Symphony, for pulling me back into Blood uh, back into Bulletstorm for a little bit and kind of make it because I couldn't find the two maps. I'm like, where are these two new Echo maps? I bought it. They should be here. <laughs> You're such a nerd. And then I'm like, oh, I can go left <laughs> or right or whatever. And I'm like, oh lord, seriously? I am. I know. Seriously, is this all the DLC was? Is it just new Echoes and two new Echoes and then three new uh, multiplayer. multiplayer maps? So it's not an actual story mm, edition or anything. No, okay. no. Uh, but I did like the Echo maps, uh, the monorail, and then the mean streets. I, th I thought that was fun because you know this was new stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I didn't I mean, recognize it. Essentially, it's a new it. new story yeah. at that point. It's just a little new story. It's just yeah, new run through. Yeah, there, it's yeah. just it's just a part of the the you know this amusement park you're you're yeah, blowing yeah. up essentially. But I, I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I it but it just made me feel stupid at the end of it when I'm like. <laughs> 
oh my god, there's a whole other game that I haven't played yet, <laughs> and I played some of those, and yeah, it's I, I like you and Red Faction Guerrilla. There's a whole game you haven't played. There is played. a whole other game to that one, yeah. But uh, I, I dug it. Uh, it was well worth the the the. I think it was 800 points. So yeah, ten bucks. Yeah, that can't be right. I think is so. it really? I think so. They I can't, can't remember. Yeah, I hope it was 400. I think it was 400. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> They'd better be charging ten dollars for five maps. Sometimes I buy willy nilly though, man. For a couple multiplayer maps and no, that's true. No, it means like you on the street crazy. corner. Yeah, that too. <laughs> hey, willy nilly, come on willy-nilly, into this alley with me. Willy-nilly. But definitely, I, I just, you know, I kind of wish I would go out into that multiplayer universe because that's the only problem with the, the Bullet Storm is you, when you play multiplayer, there's a lot of communication, a lot of setting yeah, yeah. up and things like that, especially you get those later levels mm-hmm. and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, because I'd like to try those out too, but we'll see what happens. I'm just anti social when it Send comes to, a shout out. to Xbox Live. I know. I hear you. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> uh, how about some Red Faction Armageddon? Yeah. Touch back on that. We got. I got some multiplayer in on that one. You did. You didn't play any of the regular game, did you? I started. <laughs> I did. I started. In Wait, did it, you start the night that you played five minutes and then I invited you to multiplayer? Were, Is that your start? That was my start. And that was your end? <laughs> and that was my end. Oh, Jesus. Well, it, he was trying to follow the same format for Gorilla. It worked for him then. It, it did. It, did it, it work well, for you in Armageddon? It, it actually, I, I thought the graphics looked fantastic in the uh, what I played for the, the single player. Mm-hmm. What I, you know, because I hadn't gone underground yet and anything like that. So I didn't, it was just, I thought it looked good. Yeah. I was, I was looking, I, the story was kind of cool. Then we got into multiplayer and I had a lot of fun with the multiplayer. It was fun. I had a, I had a lot of fun with it. But it got old. It, it, it did get old. The only thing I had, it's just that's what I say about Gears of War. So yeah, well, <laughs> that, that's here's here's the thing, and and we were talking about this when we were playing it too. Uh, it's it's just because it, I kept saying it was like the horde mode for uh-huh. Gears of War. Yeah, and that's really doing a disservice to the horde mode in Gears of War, <laughs> because in Gears of War you actually have to employ strategy. Yeah. Uh-huh. And we were talking about and hypothesizing that maybe when you had multiplayers in the Armageddon right, right. scenario, it would add some strategy. It doesn't. No. It's just a shitstorm of enemies. They're coming from every direction. They're yeah. on top of you all the time. And it's just a constant, you know, berating by enemies. And you're just moving around, staying movement, moving and shooting at everything. Yeah. And there's no time. There's no break. There's no setup for, like, planning anything. There's no, mm-hmm. at least on the level we were on, but I see this being, because I played a couple different levels, there's things that you can destroy, but there's not really anything you can set up like a base. You can't set up like yeah. a room yeah. that you defend. That's unfortunate. It is very unfortunate. It was very disappointing. Yeah. yeah. It, and I was like kind of hoping that, you know, maybe if you got more people in here, it could kind of right. open up a little bit. It doesn't. It didn't at all. Oh, that, was, that was the one thing I liked about Gears Horde, like Gears Horde mode is that the fact you could set up a little, little, little fort or a little like, you mm-hmm. know, a barricade. Or you had that plan. It's like, okay, yeah. I'll do this. You go do this. Yeah. And, you know, but you this, had to like sync up. This, they were coming from above. Yeah. Everywhere. It's just nothing you can everywhere. do. Everywhere. They're everywhere. Yeah. The way that the enemies jump and the way that they hang on walls and they're always above you. Mm-hmm. It's just it doesn't like line up any kind of strategy at all. Yeah. And it's frustrating. And there was enough there's enough destructibility, at least in the level we were playing, yeah. to like remind you of how Gorilla was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like it's so little that it just reminds you of what's missing. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, like I gotcha. well, it's great that that's there, but now I'm done. You know, I blew up this one little area, <laughs> yeah. and this stuff looked awesome when it blew up, but now it's gone, and yeah. I can rebuild it and destroy it again if I want to, but it's not the same as taking buildings down, and, and you know, somebody's in, up on top of a roof, so you take the building out <laughs> and watch it crash, and then they die, and there, that was awesome. There's still a lot of good moments in that game. I had a lot of fun times with some of those weapons and, you know, hooking people mm-hmm. with the magnet gun and having them fly, like, totally across the screen, right? and, like, having things crush me because of the magnet gun. There was a lot of those <laughs> neat little things about the game yeah. but in the end it just was uh, this red sparkly guy or this blue sparkly guy and they all were the same and it just it was yeah, it yeah. was just i had to get gorilla out of my head and it was just depressing yeah but but i'll tell you what i kind of want to go back and i wish i would have spent more time on the single player because you with you guys saying how when, i mean with you saying i was so linear and things like that i would probably play through that easily it would, you, <laughs> you would you could actually complete it yeah yeah you would and i'm the, the story for me was kind of just nah. i yeah. mean there is a story there i think we talked about but it didn't do anything for sure, me sure. it was kind of terrible uh, but it is very linear, yeah. and it does pull you from one, you know, That's from awesome. the start to the end. So yeah. it is definitely driven that way, yeah. which is good. So you should definitely check out the single player yeah. at some point. But the and it looks amazing. I thought it I looked still, fan. When everything's fantastic. when we were up to like wave thirty, 
and shit was everywhere yeah. and blowing up and things were blowing up all over the place. Because we, we had were, the singularity And we were cannons. both shooting singularity guns <laughs> yeah. and stuff was just blowing <laughs> And there is so much exploding and... Nothing's happening. And, and I mean, well, no. I mean, <laughs> everything's happening. happening, but nothing's happening visually. It's there was just no slowdown. Nothing. There was no oh, lag. No stutter. Whatsoever. Nothing. And, you know, I think we mentioned that when we got up through like 20-something. And... It was like, do you notice that there's like no lag whatsoever yeah. happening? Because there is so much stuff blowing up yeah. that I wouldn't even, I, I would assume that every other game was going to slow down at that point. So i uh, really happy with the experience, but it was just pretty limited in my opinion. Yeah. And it's just, it, yeah, you, yeah. You, you got the other game in your head and that's what sucks. I, and it's too bad. And I, I, it, that's going to be my disservice towards Red Faction Armageddon every time because I have Gorilla <laughs> in my head. But I did. Like I said, I thought it looked amazing. I thought the, there were some really fun aspects to the multiplayer and the single player I'm really interested in because I liked it from the start. So I just I, had to go back. I should go back and uh, actually add a appendix to uh, Trenched. Uh, so getting four players in there, totally awesome. Awesome, but uh, you get a tight area where you have four, oh. four different turrets going off and three different uh, dudes, some sprinting, some blowing stuff up, and then like 20 enemies coming all into this tiny area. Yeah. It'll chug a little bit. A little sometimes. bit. Yeah. <laughs> you miss a couple frames in there? Uh, once in a while. <laughs> yeah. It, but, it, but it all smooths back out, especially sure. because uh, you know it does it in waves, and so yeah. you, know, you can recover. At but, least have but, some but, times. But, but there are some times where things get a little uh, overwhelming for the game. <laughs> <laughs> there, you'll have that. Yeah. What that's what do? I thought was amazing. And it's a $15 game. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you got four people. Yeah. We only had two. Maybe we would have more problems if we would have had more it's people. Possible, in there. Uh, it's possible, but there was some. But... There's some nuts. The some nuts going on. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, when we were playing, there was a lot of nuts. <laughs> a lot going of on. nuts flying. At least four. Yes. <laughs> At least three, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak to anything else. Uh, so, how about some new games? Do we want to talk about some of those? Oh, sure. <laughs> Should we have return to Connect Quarter? Because I only played this next game in Connect Styly. Sure. And I only played it in Controller. Actually, awesome. no, that's not true. I did play one mode in one Connect. Mode? So, yeah, let's talk about Child of Eden. I did not play any modes in regular mode. Um, you so went and bought the game. I did. I went and bought the game. I purchased it. Uh, I bought it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what that means. Yes. <laughs> so is that it? No, that's not it. I my my brain stopped. Uh, <laughs> it's back. I had to reload. Usually, that's where all of a sudden you're thinking about playing Child of Eden <laughs> yeah, rather were, than being here. Yeah, there was a reboot. <laughs> there. On a regular show, you'd have two people with you that could maybe back you up in those instances, but we just let you hang. <laughs> I know, because that's, that's the kind of friends we are. <laughs> that's what I'm here for. I'm the guy. <laughs> I just didn't know where he's gonna go with it. <laughs> you're like, is he building up? No, you that's stop Sean. talking. He's just done. I uh, really dig the game. I, I love the. I. I I got a kick out of it. Uh, playing it on Connect, uh, you control your missiles with your right hand. Uh, they lock on. Uh, the best thing is to do is get a sequence of eight. Yeah. Um, that's the most you can get, but you get bonuses for that. And you can also get like perfect bonuses if you sync them up with the music, which mm -hmm. I thought was which is really tough. We, we, it, which is tough, uh, especially as you get into those, lo those final boss battles because it's like. Uh, I'm just shooting everything. I yeah. don't care about syncing up with anything. <laughs> exactly. And then your left hand is this, like, uh, it was my favorite. It's this rapid fire, but it also changes up the music. It puts, like, almost like a snare. It's like to the music, which I thought was really neat. I wasn't, I didn't play Res. I didn't follow what you said to go play Res. I did not do that. I tried it out right off the bat, and, uh, I really enjoyed it. I I love. I liked the game. The first mode I played through, like I don't know how many times until I finally because it's trial and error. Because yeah, I mean, yeah. you start off from the first part every time. When you die, you start off right from the get go, hmm. um, and you start right from the start. And, and that's uh, a, and I I knew that it was you know very res like, but yeah. I didn't know it was res, <laughs> <laughs> which is what it is. And you know it does add that connect connectivity i guess uh yes. i believe that is the official term the connect option uh so that changes things a little bit and it definitely looks a lot better yeah because I mean, res is what 10 years old now sure. maybe so sure pushing yeah. that yeah um so there is that aspect to it but i did read that it's like the prequel to res it's set up as the prequel so now you can play res nice i can play <laughs> but, res but you know there is that element where well, it plays the same connect. way where you're going through yeah. on rails and things appear on the screen and you shoot them, but it becomes a memorization kind of deal where yeah. you don't know the first time through what exactly you need to do because right. you get the most points by targeting full eight, eight uh, targets and yeah. shooting them. Yeah. But sometimes four will show up 
and they'll take a second, and then hey, four, four more will show yeah, up. Yeah. So you kind of got to learn that stuff in a Dragon's Lair kind of way, yeah. like where you just know that that's how it is, and that's how it was with Res, and I wasn't expecting that when this happened. Mm-hmm. And so I quickly fell back into that mode. Very cool. Where it's like you got to wait a second, but sometimes they'll show up and then disappear and not you know stay around for yeah. the full thing either. So you know you got to just learn where they show up and what actually comes into the screen and what to shoot, yeah. which I loved. Yeah, right off the bat, you have one world or that world because Eden is your the internet. You're in the yeah, internet. Yeah, this weird story. Very weird story. And Lumi was a child created in the internet, and, and you're, you're trying to save and the you're internet. Protecting her, mm-hmm. You're protecting her from all the viruses. Um, and the, the, what I said earlier, the left hand is a there's it's a purple shot, and you can only take out purple um, targets with that. Mm. There's times where you have to take up like shields and whatnot, things like yeah. that. And then the the purple, uh, the blue will target. Um, just that's what sends out the missiles. But um, there's some gates that you go through, which mm-hmm. throw you off because you got they'll they'll switch that up. The gameplay switches up. Uh, but yeah, when you learn when you learn the pattern and you learn that it's really I've played the first one a couple times because as you go through those those little worlds or passion they they got different words like passion and like love and virtue or something like that. But I should have done some research on it. But uh, or played the game or paid attention. But uh, well, I had your games. So. Yeah, that's that too. <laughs> but it I really like the fact that you get stars and that opens new ones. Yes. But also, if you get stuck on a level, like I went through and I had uh, four stars and three stars, and I couldn't get into the next world open. So I was like, well, I'll play the one that has three stars and try to get it up to four. I didn't know that if you get through it, you still star stack. Yeah, yeah. So you have which a total... I thought was really, really. I didn't cool either. About I was it. like, "How is this going to happen?" Because yeah. I, I need like eight to unlock this other one. So I got a four star both of these first levels because that ain't going to happen, yeah. son. <laughs> <laughs> but what it did is like, so I, I got two on the first time I went through, mm-hmm. and I got three the next time. Well, now that's five total that I have. Yeah. But it still just has me at three as being the most for that right, level. Right. So that was awesome. I thought that was a really cool aspect of the game. Yeah. It, it, it didn't like beat you down and make you have to go through the same level over and over again. But I had, I found out I really liked going through some of the. Mm-hmm. a second and third time through and then the stars build up and yeah you might progress to the last one you're still on level two yeah yeah um but i was having a lot of fun with it's them it's built so. around multiplayer like yeah. playing multiple levels very through much multiple so. times i should say because for each level they have four things to unlock and those things are like little uh avatar things not avatar things but they're little for your screen you, they're like they, creatures from the cre- level yeah or like the design like there's a matrix design mm-hmm. and things like that uh, that show up, and I thought that was really cool because that just inspires you to play through them at least four times. So then right. you're, you know, you get those. <laughs> but uh, the music I thought was fantastic. I, I, it just inspires me to want to get um, surround sound. In Techno Kitten Adventure, not that, but surround sound. <laughs> I mean, I, I really would like yeah. that. Um, and well, plus- that was the other thing with my playing experience because yeah. my Connect is set up on my second Xbox, which is uh, doesn't have the same setup as my yeah. main Xbox does. Mm-hmm. So my main Xbox is on a much bigger TV. It's got surround sound and everything, and that's kind of how I wanted to play this game yeah. with all of that, yeah. you know, encompassing me. That was more important to me than moving my hand around. Sure. Uh, so I, I played videotape me playing that. most. I, I played crazy. most of the game. <laughs> Uh, with the controller and yeah. I enjoyed it quite a bit and that felt definitely res like uh, the time I played the one level with connect it was weird like it was I don't know it just it was really weird and it yeah. felt kind of like obtuse like when I would have to bring my other arm up to shoot the the mm-hmm. machine gun like the purple gun that felt a little weird uh, it was just weird I, I felt like I was getting off center a lot like as far as my visual oh. because my hand would note it like it would move the camera to yeah. where my hand was yeah. pointed so sometimes if I would be changing hands to like use the different hand for the different gun when I would bring the other one back up it would be like my camera would be all off center sure. and so then I'd have to like find everything again so it felt like it was taking longer I should okay. say uh, but I felt like it was easier to definitely wave your hand across the screen and kind of grab, you know, eight targets yeah. as opposed to having to move the cursor around right, everywhere. Right. Yeah. So that was definitely more fluid. Um, but it was just a little weird. And sometimes I found the triggering, like where you'd have to just flick your hand forward yeah. to like shoot everything. Like sometimes it wasn't working the best. Yeah. So I was getting in the flow of it. I think it was just also a learning process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As as it, I had a really tough time at first. Mm-hmm. I was honestly thinking about switching over to controller. I was getting kind of annoyed by it. And then it was just like a couple, I realized what I needed to do. And then it was just, it became more fluid and I was dancing a lot. <laughs> I could see that. I was having a lot of fun. Just literally, was, I could see it. I was just, standing outside. Yeah. <laughs> nice creepy but uh <laughs> that i i enjoyed like especially those moment moments where the game just stops and you just watch the stuff and there's yeah. some really cool visuals going on and i i like that about this game is 
that you want to sit. You could sit and watch it, mm-hmm. but I it's you, art. It doesn't take away from it by playing it either. Because sometimes there's a lot of stuff going on, but you really kind of I like that about it. It grabs your attention. Mm-hmm. Something will happen. And you're like, am I supposed to shoot at that? <laughs> I don't know. I was like, what is that thing? <laughs> it's just like I I really enjoyed it. And then I think there's what five five levels. The last level was insane. I had a lot of fun with it, and I didn't pass it, though. That's the only thing is that, you know, luckily there is the replayability, and yeah. there is the encouraged replayability, and a reason to, because it is short, it, is what I'm hearing yeah, from a lot of people. It amps yeah. up, it amps up too. You know, you can burn through it in probably a couple hours, which for a $50 game, that might be a little iffy for some sure. people. Um, but there is, you know, there's no story here that you're playing out that once it's over, there's really no reason to exp- not experience it again. Yeah. I mean, it's all about bettering your score, mm-hmm. but getting everything and like learning the patterns and just having fun going through multiple times. Yeah. So it luckily it lends itself to that. There's a lot of That'll cool extend moments. a lot of gameplay. Yeah. You yeah. recommend it? Passion. <laughs> that was, I think that's the one. Yeah. That's the one I really liked. It's like the fifth or fourth level. I only oh. got about halfway through it. So cool. I didn't get to play the fifth. You didn't pass the fifth. No, it's not the fifth. No. We could still play I'm it. Thinking there's you could six still levels. love it and not pass it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I ever even finished Res because it operates on the same scenario where you know you have the certain amount of life yeah. and you're dead and you have to restart the whole thing over again. Except in Res, I think you gotta go from the beginning of the game to the end. Yeah. There's some levels <laughs> And in that the, one is like, what? I think it's like the third level. There's like a couple parts that I I don't want to ever return to that game. <laughs> Just to not play it through because I was nuts. like, I don't want to deal with that whole yeah. part because that's where I would die like four different times. Well, it does have a so. free mode, right? So you can yeah. go in yeah. and oh, like, yeah. oh, yeah. you don't take any damage. Yep. Yeah. So you can go through and just oh, okay. play through the level if you want to, yep. which is good. So You just don't get any stars the super for throw mode. The super, super throw, throw mode. <laughs> the baby mode. What's I, I, I really enjoyed it. It, it. I'm not just saying that because I went out and bought it, but... <laughs> I did. I did. I did enjoy Excuse. it, and I like standing there and waving my hands at my TV. Cool. <laughs> I am the controller. How about some uh, Duke Nukem? You guys can talk about forever stuff on that one. Balls. 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 What? I I, I didn't of play steel? forever balls. I just played balls forever. Of steel. Duke. Um, Duke. Yeah, I didn't play a lot of it. I played the demo. That's all I played. And what is the demo? Is it the beginning of the game? Do you I know? don't. It's hard to tell. You start off in a football stadium. Okay, yeah, it's the beginning. Of the okay, game. and then uh, and then it cuts out to Duke playing his own game and yeah. making a comment about it, and then you're and then in the desert. Two like high right. school girls are giving him a blowjob. Yeah, something like something. that. Yeah. And then, Classy like that. And, and then uh, you're driving a monster truck in the desert. And then I kind of got bored. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of got bored as well. And here's the thing: the game's a getting monster truck in the desert. The game gets is like getting like ravaged <laughs> everywhere, yeah. like terribly. Yeah. Which I don't know what people were expecting. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's essentially a 12 year old game. I exactly. Mean, it, that is the case right. for the most part, and it is based on the original. You know, Duke Nukem games where, like, you kind of know what you're getting, right? Like, what are you expecting it to happen? That's the well, only reason I it, didn't so play with it. Gear, with Gearbox attached, I'm sure that raised a lot of expectations. Well, but by, <laughs> I don't know by who, because all they did was pick it up and, like, just get it out. I yeah, mean, but the people, most of the stuff people don't already... really understand a lot of how gameplay, people are game stupid. design is, <laughs> happens. So. I, have it be known, I think people are stupid. <laughs> what? That is a revelation You can to quote me. me on that. <laughs> Again. Uh, that'll be on your tombstone. <laughs> it will be. People are dumb. <laughs> you people are all stupid. No, you people, so that the people reading your tombstone... <laughs> Get insulted, of course. <laughs> With the, it will Nobody. Be a, it'll be a, like a, a like a, a, hand a hand sticking out of a hand it. Pointing. pointing. Yeah, and yeah. then another with like flipping them off at the bottom. <laughs> no, on Can the we back of, on the back of it though. As <laughs> you're walking away, you're like, that was a oh, and it's just like a it was just a. Can we clarify real quick, though, that nobody would read my tombstone? <laughs> I would if it said that. I would take pictures of it. I'd be like, dude, he totally did it. Let's just be clear. <laughs> Nobody's really going to visit me. put a vending me. machine next to it. That's a stipulation in your will. <laughs> I want a vending machine next to All my right. tombstone. Dude, Nukem Forever. Well, this conversation Steals. is more exciting than yes, the game, so. <laughs> Uh I just don't know. what. So, you know, when I'm seeing sites give it, like, zeros and ones and twos out of, like, ten... I don't really understand that. I mean, it is. I mean, it's, you kind of know what you're getting, and and the game works. I didn't think it was. I didn't have anything that I didn't broke. think it was terrible. I just, you know, in in the demo at least, it was like, well, you just fight that boss, in, yeah, in the very beginning, and then later it was like, oh, here's one or two enemies. Mm-hmm. Okay, shoot them. 
and now I have to walk a bunch of space. And that's essentially I, what the game you know, was that I played. Encounter one more guy. Uh, yeah. And so that's why I ended up getting a little bored with I it. I did run into a situation where I had to drive a vehicle like you were talking mm-hmm. about, and the vehicle handled con- like terribly. Oh. So I was having I think no the monster fun. truck was okay. I this flipped was a it little... right away, but that was just because I didn't know what I was doing. This is a little RC car that you were driving in because Uh-oh. you get shrunk down. Uh-huh. Yeah. The so, shrink ray. Yeah, the yeah. shrink ray hits him until he gets shrunk down, and his voice was hilarious. Like, it was funny <laughs> to listen to him because he's like, hey, what happened here? Oh, they, oh, yeah, so that's they totally even better. Voice, which yeah. is awesome. And I'm like, well, this is going to be funny because yeah. he's running around yeah. and he's little and he's like talking like with a little voice. But then he gets in this RC car and you got to drive around and it's terrible. <laughs> so I'm like, well, this isn't fun anymore. Uh, and then you do a turret section after that, which wasn't fun because it just went on forever. And so I was like, I'm not even going to bother anymore. Like, I'm done with this. <laughs> and it wasn't. It wasn't like horribly offensive. It, I mean, it was the lame jokes, of course. Yeah, yeah. And I was, you, you know, ready for that stuff, so I, I was prepared and was fine with it. Uh, but like you said, Sean, it's like if you play Bullet Storm, you don't need Bullet Storm is the new Duke Nukem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you don't like why? Yeah. Why do you want that same dialogue, but in a game that looks like it was made twelve exactly, years ago? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna play a game that has a dialogue, I want it to look awesome. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah yeah so it didn't do much for me and it was at that time that i was you know like i've talked before i'm glad it's not i'm not doing a review of the game yeah that i'm not committed to doing a review of the game right. because i would felt like i would have had to go through it and then i probably would have started to resent it yeah and yeah. hate it and maybe that's where people are coming from with their oh, reviews yeah. of Quite you know possible. i had to play this so i'm pissed <laughs> at it now but i was able to play it and go yeah i don't really care and then yeah. put it away and then i realized you know that it might not be not for everybody but it, there's some people that i could see some well, getting some enjoyment you know there's there's video games out there that have titles and those titles like resident evil super mario brothers yes zelda they all come with a feeling of what the game is going <laughs> yeah, right, right, uh, right. to be no matter what it's supposed to be yeah yeah and duke nukem is on that list <laughs> i agree and i that's the only reason i didn't play it they, if they would have called it DN and did a different cover, I probably wouldn't have even known and tried it out. But and I guess that's my take on it, too. DN. When I see those people that are, like, giving it a zero, I'm like, do you, like, get Resident Evil and then, like, give it a zero because all you do is fight zombies? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's like kind of the same deal, right? You know what you're getting. Like, to, to then... Yeah, re- but they've given innovations to the Resident Evil game. That's true. It's true. That's true. It's true. I mean, it's not yeah. like it is the same game. And I guess that, that ties into the problem with it being a 12-year-old game. Right. You know, that it's, it was made in a different time, and it's been finalized now but that doesn't change where it was made it's made with rocks <laughs> including some of the rubber bands and sticks including you know those some minecraft the... computers they make you know, where it uses fire and things that's that's how they programmed it i think there's even some jokes that were written then that haven't been updated and i think that's true i think there are some jokes that are like you're now like what Is that really still relevant or funny no dated a little dated. <laughs> Might want to touch that up a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, it didn't, do, it didn't do much for me. You have anything else to add? No. On Duke, are you good? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. Your thoughts across. <laughs> uh, another game that I don't have a lot to say about was Hunted Demon's Forge, which I checked out. Mm-hmm. And this is the co-op, um, I guess, medieval times, like sword and sorcery type game yes. that is a mix of Gears medieval of War types. that they want you to think of. Oh. Uh. So you're oh, yeah, running the around. Yeah, they, covers, they almost got system. me on that. On that, we should have done it because I think that multiplayer almost, would have been yeah. a horrible experience. Yeah, they almost. <laughs> at least got we would have shared it. It's like a, <laughs> a dungeon crawler for the gears. Yeah, it fans. didn't, it didn't do like, a lot for me. Ooh. It was another one that looked pretty dated as far as like current gen games. Sure, sure. Uh, so I was kind of turned off at that point, but I was still. Well, willing, you are a snob. Yes. I was willing to stick it out uh, <laughs> if the gameplay was there, but the gameplay was kind of clunky as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, you you one was a range attacker, one was a close combat attacker because you play a, a dude or a girl, mm-hmm. uh, and you could switch off from them at different points in the game. It wasn't a free form switch at any time. Mm-hmm. You had to get to these stone things that you could then switch and become the other player if you wanted that to. Sounds like quantum theory. It reminded me a little bit of Quantum Theory uh, <laughs> in style, where it just it like looked like it was dated. Oh, okay. It looked like and, and Quantum Theory was another uh, like totally going on the gears. Oh, yeah, oh, that, was, that was the one with the weird armor and that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and you're in that spire. And that's like what this hours. felt like, <laughs> except that it was done in an RPG <laughs> setting, you know, like a fantasy setting. Sure. Right. And that's what this felt like to me. And so I kind of had that same feeling, and I was like, I'm done with this game. And I had a couple of points where it's like, if you die, your your uh, co-op partner can like revive you but they do it from distance so they throw this like vial at you and one of the times i was like dying and i was laying there bleeding out and he wouldn't save me 
He was standing over top well, of Well, maybe me. you shouldn't have been such a dick to him. <laughs> I think that that's what he was saying. <laughs> no. Just looking at me, no. If, you have, if your AI comes over and teabags you, then there's that's a problem. That's pretty much what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, maybe your experience is different out there. Uh, and especially if you're doing co-op, maybe that adds a little bit of play to it. Sure. But yeah. for me, it didn't add anything. Yeah. Like, the single-player experience was just not enough for me to carry on. Yeah. I didn't care. So, there, there you go. That's my little two-second look at that game. That's too bad. It was too bad. How about Alice into Madness, though? Some Madness Returning. Yes. Yeah. What do you think of that? You played it a lot more than I did. I'm glad that you rented it, to be honest with Why? you. Because you sent it out a tweet. Because uh, he wouldn't have picked it up No, otherwise. I wouldn't have. Uh, you, sent out <laughs> ah, a, you sent out a tweet. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so you sent out a tweet with that list of games you had, like 40 games. Because I had like 40 games sitting there. Jeez. Rented the whole place out. So um, I was like, well, it was on the shelf. I thought, ah, I'll try it out. And I really, it pulled me in off the bat. I enjoyed, I loved the look. The design was really cool to it. Um, a little bit on the dark, twisted side of, mm-hmm. you know, Alice. Uh, I'm not too familiar with uh, the subject matter, if there is. I The the, the original, the, the, the American yeah. McGee's. The American McGee's, yeah. Alice. Not too I'll hip tell you this, on that. I own that game for the PC. Yeah. And the PC I bought it for could never play it. I got it like super cheap, like five bucks or something, yeah, like yeah. a number of like a long time ago. Yeah. And then my PC couldn't play it. So I was like, oh, damn it. So because at that time it was only on PC. Sure. So I never got to play it. Yeah. So now this is my first foray into it. Yeah. Foray. Full ray. But I, I, I enjoyed it. I liked the the weapons that you get. You pick up like this salt, uh, this uh, pepper grinder gun. Yeah. Which I thought was really cool. And you can upgrade those as you pick up teeth throughout the game. Um. <laughs> Like ni- there's a knife, a pepper gun. Uh, there's a teapot that shoots like a grenade type thing, and there. I didn't get that yet. One spoiler, like a toaster that shoots out grenade evil teapot. Toast. Isn't there like a like a horse head that you get? Yes, a hobby horse. Yes, which is fan. Does that work F- like a hammer? hammer? Yeah, and okay. it's awesome because then you like when you do like a combo, it it will go three, and it's pretty <laughs> cool. I I enjoyed and like they they change. The knife doesn't change as much, but everything else changes by looks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it does, a, you, you do a little different action too. I love the art style and I like yeah. the integration that they do with it. You know, like I said, I had, I, I owned the other game, but I never played it. Uh, sure, so I'm, I was familiar at least with the look of the game and the design, but I thought it was really smooth. Yeah. And like oh, moving yeah. around in the environments, they were kind of plain because it plays like a platformer yeah. uh, action adventure type game yeah. and mostly platforming. Yeah. Mostly. Um, and I didn't have too much problems with the camera. Um, but some of the elements or the environments just look kind of plain, mm-hmm. like like they were really well done and like nice looking, but there wasn't a lot going on. Like it was a lot of open area that you yeah. were moving around. Yeah. In. And some of the stuff I thought looked f- flat, like yeah, some of the yeah. background, it looked like you were in front of like uh, a backdrop of an old time movie. Type yeah, like of thing. it was just painted on the yeah, wall. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, and, and there was a lot of part of the surrealism. I know. And well, there was a lot of texture. <laughs> that was the other thing, too. There were some actual texture problems, too, though, where oh. it's like sometimes there would be some pop in textures where it would like there'd be nothing there. And all yeah. of a sudden, then the art would fill in. Yeah. And so that was, you know, but I, you know, I could forgive it because the gameplay, most importantly, was really smooth and well done. Yep. And I didn't have any issues like maneuvering around or shooting enemies. And like the combat was smooth. Yep. And you know, targeting you, was good on it. Targeting was yep. great. You could go into a first person mode where you targeted, and that stuff was really well done. Mm-hmm. Um, there's hidden stuff all over the place to find. Yes. Because you knew you mentioned your weapons, but you also have the ability to like evade combat, and she turns into all these little butterflies yep. and kind of just phases out and goes in the direction that you choose. Mm-hmm. That was really well done. Sometimes mm-hmm. the evade mo- uh, options in games are like. Cl- uh, like kind of cumbersome yeah. and clunky and that wasn't the case here at yeah. all because you basically went invisible and went through things yeah and that really helped and if you kept if you kept target on the character mm-hmm. you would just pretty much turn into butterflies go around them and you'd be behind them mm-hmm. so it made for the fighting really cool very fluid yeah, um, yeah. and then you could shrink down at any yeah, you, time you could just go really small and then that allowed you to see things it was like Batman's detective mode. It was. Um, there, was there would be like messages hit, written on the wall, but you could only see them when you shrunk down. Yeah. Your, your screen kind of went purplish. Yeah. And then you could get through ah. like hidden areas. There were keyholes that you could only get through if you mm-hmm. were shrunk. Um, and then like in that snow level, there was like snow that would disappear and yep. show you hidden paths. Yeah. Hmm. And so there was just a lot of neat elements to it. Yeah. I thought it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of different uh, levels that uh, you will have to switch down because there's invisible like uh, walkways. And, well, yeah, there's that too. And like elevators, <laughs> which drives me nuts because when it, they disappear, you're, you're just standing, standing on, on nothing. Air. And it's just like, uh, uh, so I was constantly going, <laughs> droop, droop, like it's going small and up a lot. Because they of kind time. of fade out at yeah. the time. Yeah. 
Um, I, my only guff, or my only guff, I I finished the game. I completed yeah. it. Oh, you did finish it. I did complete it. Um, you are awesome. But the game needs to be about three hours shorter. <laughs> um, that is. I like the complaint that the game is too much. It, but that's too much game. But the thing about it money. is, and when it came down to it, it was especially when I was getting closer to the fifth, the sixth, the sixth chapter is not too bad. When I was getting to the fifth chapter, it just felt like I was painting the same level, but with a different paint. A different skin. Okay, yeah. Because you were that. going through almost the same motions on every single one. And it was like, okay, okay, okay. That makes sense. And, and you know, the way that it plays as a platformer, I mean, and like I said, with everything kind of just being open. Yeah. It, it, I could see that as you get to another level, it's just another open level with a different background drop. Well, yeah. You're and jumping from platform to platform. You would slide into the level, and then what you'd have to jump through all these little hoops to get to one part of the level. Then you had to solve a puzzle to slide yeah. down into another one, just jump through this into the slide down. And you went through those same motions. And it was like if they would have taken two to three of them off of that, I would have been so... It got to the point where on the fifth stage, I was like, fuck it. I'm getting this game <laughs> done. I'm, I was pissed. This is what... Two two chapters. It took me almost six hours. This two really... chapters, and it's a six-hour game. So figure the math on that. I know this is Sean. <laughs> Wait, that doesn't work. I know this is Sean. That math doesn't work. And, and I was a normal player. It was like six hours. I got started playing at six, got done at midnight, and it was two chapters. Yeah, but that it can't be a six-hour game then. But that's what I'm saying. That's six hour hours game. right there. But the, <laughs> no, I'm saying there's six chapters, thirty-six hours. I know. Or no, something like that. I don't know. Do my fucking. That math. was that was the weird part to me because they showed you a completion percentage at the beginning of the game, like in the in the front menu, and for the longest time it was sitting at six percent. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, like I've played for hours. Yeah. And I finally got past that first chapter, and it jumped to 21%. And I'm like, oh. So they don't really give you a progress as you go along. Yeah. It's just like at the at certain points, they update that percentage. Yeah. Like, what a jump. And it, it is a long game. Yeah, it is a long game. Some of those games towards the end get very like graphic, like gross, and the noise is pretty gross. Oh, really? It's it pretty evil and pretty That's twisted. Awesome. And I normally that kind of thing shrugs me off, but it was that whole other gameplay, like the weapons and like the upgrading and being able to turn small and just seeing the story kind of evolve because like you don't know if she's crazy or you don't know what's right or wrong and that's what was it was i was like i need to get done with this so i know what actually is happening yeah. instead of me thinking about it but yeah it was just a little short then they had these uh these radul radulas radulas i don't know they're like the, what muscles eat to, they're like what they eat out of i looked it up because i didn't know how to <laughs> say it radula <laughs> radula it's radula but there's these little things and then you, what it does it takes you into this other Oh, like, oh, they're oh, like a oh. mini game throughout this whole game. So like there was one where you fought, you had to fight w waves and waves at the villains. And then you get like uh, paint to paint your rows, which will give you if you paint four of them or paint, get four paints, it will give you an extra health on your health okay, meter. Yeah. But they had a platform part to it that look, it was a side scrolling platformer and it looked like it was made out of paper. And it was fucking cool. That's awesome. And it was all those little mini games. Like I was looking for those things. Like there was yeah. no tomorrow because one of them was you're like a pirate ship and you're it was like a shooter and you're shooting all these skeleton sharks. And another one was like uh, that's awesome. You get asked a question by the Cheshire and you had to answer it. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> th those like I didn't understand because you had to. F it was like almost solving a riddle. Yeah, yeah. And that that that, makes sense. that kind of stuff was really neat to the game. That's cool. And it really appealed to me. It just it just was just a little bit too long for you me. Know, and then on top of that, it has the original game. Yeah, I if saw, you buy yeah. the game, there's a code that comes with it for oh, it the original really? game that you can download yeah. uh, from the marketplace. Oh wow! You can't even buy that game by itself on huh. the marketplace. So it doesn't have achievement side to it, but it's the entire That's original so cool. game that yeah. you can download. So when I played this game, like immediately to me after a couple of days of playing it, I was like, this game is totally worth a purchase. Yeah. Like if you, it, I, I'd agree. I, I would mean, agree. Neither of us bought it, obviously. I would agree. <laughs> but uh, I can, you know, when you're looking <laughs> at games as far as like worth, there's a lot of gameplay here. There is, there is. And I, some of those levels would be fun to play again. It's just, I think the fact that it, it I think the fact that it was a rental really curbed my enjoyment of it. Cause I was like, I need to get it done by this time because yeah. I don't want to rerun yeah. it again. So that is I mean, the problem that, with rentals. That might that may be the thing, but also at the same time, it was a little bit of the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. I but visually, I thought it was fantastic. Some of the best camera 
the being able to ma manipulate the camera for me was really cool. The only time I didn't like it was during jumps, but I don't know how any game is going to ever fix that. So you know, what I'll tell you, the fix in this game as they don't do normal platformers is the ability to multiple jump multiple times. Oh, well, you can almost that was awesome. You can almost like really fly in this game, which is really cool about because it. she has a floating mechanic, but she can double jump. But every time you float, you can jump again. Yeah. So you could jump like seven times, which. Yeah. They need in all platforming games. There was some times where I didn't even use some of those purple platforms because I <laughs> made it to where I needed to go just by jumping uh, and floating, manipulating the float. Yeah, it was very really cool, well and th and it looked awesome. Yep. I mean, because there'd be all these little butterflies. That was the thing too. Is like, and her suit would change, or her dress would change per uh, per level. I guess that that's a part of the game too. I guess if you finish the game, you can access suits, and the suits are little, or the dresses are add Sean's in to gain. So as long as you can change <laughs> outfits. Hey. Hey, I'm all about just. I, that's just how I promote. That's how I promote a trench to him. I sent him. I sent him a message. Hey, Sean, did you know you can change the outfits? You on can your customize. Marine? You can give him a different hat. <laughs> Shut up, guys. Buy it. But I, I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it was a cool game. Awesome. Yeah. I think I'll word down to Shadows of the Damned, and that's it. Damn. What? Thank God. It is awesome. <laughs> What don't you... Okay. Shadows okay. of the Damned. Okay. I've Are got, you familiar with no, the game wait. at all? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Okay. I've got three things right I've off heard the about the hot boner. No, I've hot got... Hot boner. No, yeah. Check yeah. it and see. No, I've, wait. That's different. <laughs> I've got... But I wouldn't mind. I've got three <laughs> things that I wrote down. One-Eyed William, who is this flying eyeball that leaves... He's your checkpoint. Who he is leaves, your checkpoint. Who leaves flaming piles of shit behind him. Correct. Um, and that activates your checkpoint. And then these are two... What's wrong with that? These are two quotes... <laughs> <laughs> from our protagonist, oh, no. um, the prince Garcia, the Hotspur? prince, the prince, yeah, Garcia Hotspur, the, Hotspur, the prince dressing luchador or whatever he is. I, not even a luchador. What are those? The guys from uh, his middle name fucking too. Mar mariachi. Like well, he says he says that at some point. The mariachis. <laughs> he calls himself. He reminds me like a mariachi. He just okay. doesn't carry the weapon with him. He has it in his hand. Oh, like um, from Des like yeah. from the yeah. yeah 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 El Mariachi. But he says he seems like a real dick. Tater. And then this other one, these demon pubes are blocking the door. Okay. Did that, you got to tell me that didn't make you laugh. It didn't because it was nasty. You didn't laugh I don't at that like, at I all? don't like the word demon pubes. So that didn't make you like react in any this way. It wasn't really, a, I was like, it, it was more of a, oh, come on type of thing. I was like, uh, because it was the visual. I know. It was the visual because that went along with it. had these purple vine things yes. that were covering it. And he's it like, these like, demon pubes. It looked like pubes. And I about puked because I was laughing so hard. Yeah. I don't know. It Especially with the silhouette of your gun, which is called Boner, looks like a penis. I know, but everything in this game is all dick jokes. I it's mean, that's all, all it is. It, it is a Kevin Smith video game. However, on top of that, <laughs> there are other elements. It's not just that. It's not the Duke Nukem where it's just okay. the dick jokes. I don't... So you have to be okay with the dick jokes. A lot, but, yeah. But then there's also these other... Okay, so first off, it's made by like Suda. Storm. Suda51. Okay. Well, Let's difference. talk about the game makers. Yeah. Because you got Suda51, who, No More Heroes, uh, mm -hmm. Killer7. Yeah. You've got uh, the dude from Resident Evil, mm -hmm. the original creator of yeah. Resident Evil. Very Resident So they're Evil. both the makers of the game. And then you've got the guy doing the score from Silent Hill. <laughs> I'm in, like, yeah. 100%. Because not only you have all these, like, horror game or, like, you know, over the top style game yeah. peep makers. Yeah. But then they're, like, aware of like totally aware of their genre mm -hmm. and they're totally playing on it yeah and there is that element as well so while there is all the dick jokes and there are a, a lot ton, of dick jokes like everything that's said is a pun yes everything uh, but there's also Entange. like <laughs> there's also elements of like those kind of games like resident evil and silent hill that they're totally playing on and having fun with and yeah. making jokes of and i enjoy that a ton hmm I like the Resident Evil. I, I I get that from the Resident The gameplay remind me of the first Resident Evil, like totally. Mm -hmm. Like I can't freaking aim to save my life You know what it felt sometimes. like too is I got a really big dead, Deadly Premonition vibe from it. <laughs> the times you would go in and fight those dudes yeah. and you'd be in like that dark uh, area. Yeah. Yes. It's like that, except it looks better. It yeah, it does look better. better. It does look better. But there's and a dark... Not, they're, not as, they're not as creepy as the... I didn't get that creepy Basically, vibe from it. what the game is, is because yeah. we didn't talk about... The, we've only talked about the dick jokes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hotspur well, that finds, is the the top selling point. The Hotspur finds his girlfriend in a dumpster. Well, no, that's later. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. She, he comes Spoiler. home. She's, she's killed herself. <laughs> yeah. She gets taken by a demon. He's a demon hunter, so he goes into hell after her, basically, to rescue her, mm -hmm. uh, and kill this 
demon. What? Tell me. But that's the whole thing about the story that, that I Dante did not Inferno? did not. Yes. This is yeah that I did not. <laughs> so under, many yeah. things that I did not understand is that the fact that he was a demon hunter. Yes. And he never met this main demon that these are the demons he's been hunting. There's a lot of demons. The main demon is like of you, Sean. six-eyed yeah. demon guy. You are a demon. Timothy or something like that. or <laughs> can't remember what his name something is. Something weird. Like Fleming. That. Fleming. Yeah. Timothy Fleming. Some Ian Fleming. 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 Yes, that's it's Ian was. Fleming. It's Ian Fleming. <laughs> it is. He's got six <laughs> skull eyes. Um, yeah, th- th- I, and he's like, I fucking James Bond, bitch. This game had enough. <laughs> Can't do nothing. But that was the thing too. Is like I was like, well, he's got this gun that kills demons, but he doesn't. I don't know. It's just like he didn't have an agenda. Like the demons <clears throat> came across, just came out of nowhere and would attack. It's him. like it's like Hellblazer, John yeah. Constantine. There's and really they're no getting s- back at him. Yeah, there's really not much of a setup for yeah. persecuting them for so you long. You just get dumped into hell, basically. It's like he found that boner gun. And then that's when all this shit happened. That's his buddy, his well, jo- Johnson. Yeah, Johnson. His skull, flaming skull that like walks I, I, with him. I did like Johnson and his. I like he had a British accent. Yeah, so I you that walk was around. Good. You got a flaming. He's very formal then. You got a flaming skull that he's on a stick, so he kind of works as your torch. But yeah. then he turns into everything else you need. So motorcycle. He's, he's a motorcycle. He's your gun, <laughs> machine gun, your shotgun, and your machine gun, which are the three weapons that you have. Uh, and but he's one, just got dicks on the brain. He and, does, and he goes limp once in a while too. He does <laughs> because you do get into areas of darkness where. Uh, like darkness will envelop and you'll lose you'll slowly lose your health while you're in that darkness Mm -hmm. and you can't really kill any of the enemies so there's multiple ways to shut off that darkness in the game um, different kinds of ways to shut it off one is by calling Spider-Man to turn off the dark no No. the first one is uh, there's goat heads that are floating in levels or like on walls, and you have to shoot those with your light gun because your gun can also, if you hit the bumper button, shoots this light, uh-huh. a bullet. And if you hit that, it, it illuminates the goat head, mm-hmm. and then it clears out the darkness. Yeah. So that's the main way mm-hmm. that you learn first off. And so sometimes enemies will be that dark like armor first, and you'll have to hit them with the the light gun first, and mm-hmm. then you can shoot them freely. Yeah. Um, that's basically the gameplay, and you do that for the entire game. But there are crazy boss battles that you get into. Yeah. I don't think you even got to the first, like... I got to one one boss. He uh, was a big guy and kept stealing the goat head, and I had to chase him down. It was in this <laughs> carnival thing. Okay. And then I just had to shoot his head multiple, multiple times. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'll tell you what. If, it's if, awesome. If there is a really it's cool a aspect to this game, and it was... I found this book in this room. Thank you. And, it's amazing. And I open the book, and he tells me this story about this guy that never got his fill, and it was awesome. Now, if they had like that every other like a, a, like constantly, like they a, do. Well, I know you. I'm saying further than where I dropped the son it's of a like bitch. It's like the TV show in uh, Alan Wake. Yeah, is in, in a sense something like that. What it that. is though is the storybook is telling you about the next boss that you're fighting. Oh. Okay. It's basically their their origin mm-hmm. of the demon that you're fighting, like I the next see, guy. I and see. I didn't pick up on because I'm slow and I was too uh, baby. Maybe, maybe that makes too sense. Too berated by the, guy the dick jokes. Eating. Okay. Right. Yeah. That I didn't really pick up on it until like the third one, and I'm like. Oh, wait, that's the guy I just fought. Yeah. (laughs) Or that I'm going to fight. Yeah. Uh, You had a premonition. I'm I'm stupid. (laughs) Uh, But the storybooks are awesome because they read like this little fable, basically, about about somebody. And they they make comments in between it. Yeah. And and that stuff is read really well. I thought that was I thought that was awesome about it. And there's it. one of them that Garcia reads. Yeah. Like the third one. Mm-hmm. And it is awesome because he kind of stumbles with the English language. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like trying to sound out words. He's like, the guy went to the aqua aquarium <laughs> and it's hilarious Very because cool. the whole and maybe you can find that on youtube i'm yeah, sure just yeah. that video but you should watch that because it's hilarious his read on it is amazing <laughs> like the voice work is just really well done and they make little jokes in between that stuff was awesome maybe if i had the game on mute i would probably spend <laughs> you wouldn't a hear the storybooks i know well until i got to those but, but i thought you were the big uh bullet storm defender well, i am a bullet there's t- <laughs> I'm all oh, that got turned around. It's, no, the, the <laughs> thing about Bullet Storms, that was the thing. The thing about Bullet Storm, I understand that it is just more bravado. Okay. That's what this is. <laughs> it is. All, all they're but doing when is everything is shit. A, everything is a dick or, a, you know, it's just, I don't know. The only thing I liked about it was... I haven't played either game, so my, my I know, comparison you're just of the two yeah. is, just, is, is just for my hilarious uh, benefit. You're just the instigator in this scenario, it's, which is awesome. Well, it's just like the... I'm, I'm, I guess I was fine on the bravado. Maybe because it looks well, too. Right? Bulletstorm looks good to me, and I have fun playing it. It's more arcadey, where this is more of a Resident Evil, and mm-hmm. it just remembers reminds me of the days where I can't shoot and I shoot walls all the time. Yeah. Um, 
and then some of the gameplay threw me off too is because of the just the the darkness and trying to trying to you have to really change your gameplay up because you got to mm-hmm. then once they get in developed in darkness then you got to handle with the fire and da 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 um sometimes it gets really chaotic and that's when the the resident evil comes in because there'll be guys behind you which thank god this game has like a b like a melee button so when they are guys behind you you can hit b but the and only it- problems i'm already button smashing so when that b pops up miss it. i miss it and then I get attacked from the back, but I've been paying. I was paying more attention to it. It just, I, I just had to. Put yeah, they the do game give down. you a little mention of a B button when the guy's behind you. You can kind of, you know, hit you him, stab so you get him, him off. It's of a them. really, it is a cool, cool. I graphic. really like the the combat style. It yeah. took a little bit to get used to because the targeting is a little loose. Yeah. Uh, but I got used to it, and yeah. you know, you can upgrade your weapons so they become more powerful. You do find these. It's it's totally done arcade style mm-hmm. where you kill the enemies and like gems pop out of them. Yeah. Like, like diamonds. diamonds and. If you kill, if you shoot out their legs, this is just a tip, a yeah. helpful tip for me. Shoot Pro out tip. their legs, and they'll crawl on the ground, mm-hmm. and then you can walk up to them and stomp on them in like Mario coin block style, like more <laughs> coins, like diamonds <laughs> shoot out of them. I was wondering, that's a that big bonus. Old. Okay, then I only all right. So there cool. were like times towards like halfway through the game where I was just taking out rooms of guys by the legs and just walking around stomping on everybody and just getting tons <laughs> of these diamonds. Uh, and so there's a little tip. And then you buy, you use those diamonds to like go to the store, which is this big even, evil demon dude. Did you run into him? I didn't go to the store. I was going to the evil vending machines. There's this guy who looks like the creepiest motherfucker ever. Yeah. And you like run into him, and he's like, he's got this like hillbilly accent, and he's like the store guy. <laughs> he's like, he's just helpful. He's like, hey, what's up? How's it going? But he's like really creepy and gross looking. <laughs> <laughs> and then you give him money, and he pukes up your items. And I think that was it. Was awesome. I think the other thing that was the other thing too is like I had just gotten done playing Alice and yeah, the it's emotional a... like beat down that <laughs> Alice gave me because it was like repetitive and it got really gross. So got, got visually like just gross. There's like, a lot of very very fleshy, and that was Alice towards the end of Alice. It gets very fleshy and very like organic, mm-hmm. and this one has a lot of that going. There's on. There's a lot of gross stuff in the game, but and, it's done like so tongue in cheek and yeah. jokey that mm-hmm. it's like so funny. Like it's 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 an Evil Dead style. Sure. And in fact, yeah. there's a mode that is pretty much a rip off of Evil Dead. Like there's oh, so. one of the levels. It like mo- mocks scene for scene like one of the Evil Deads. Wow, um, really? Like as it's going through, okay. like where you see through the zombie eyes or uh-huh. the the zo- the creature eyes. Yeah. yeah, and it like comes up on the house, mm-hmm. and that's totally what happens in the game. Like a couple different times, like in this one level, it's nice. called like Evil the Dead or something like. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's even it's blatant. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's yeah, totally sure. done on purpose, and it's awesome. Uh, my only issue, a couple of issues I had with the game were uh, control wise, there was a couple problems. There, there, there is some bugs that are persistent throughout the game. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I would get hit, and when I would do my left target to, to or my left trigger to target on somebody, my gun would be shooting, even though that's the right trigger. Oh, oh, that's handy. Uh, and then there was a couple times where you would go to run and you couldn't run. I don't like because, the running in the game. Yeah, you do. You can only do it for short bursts, but sometimes it was really slow to respond yeah. to. Yeah, or like. I couldn't control like if I I couldn't move that well like I couldn't go to the right or left yeah it seems like it would just barrel me straight if I didn't and normally you don't, don't have to run too where. much but there are some of those areas where you're trying to get through the darkness yeah and then there are a couple different spots in the game which are terrible which are this person that's chasing you mm-hmm. and it's a one touch death mm. so basically it might be it might as well be a wall of spikes coming at you yeah because you just have to run forward yeah. and so you have to run and shoot out ob- objects and like get through without her touching you. Yeah, and if she touches I, you, you die and have to redo it again. That's deadly premonition. And I had to do it. Yeah, I don't totally. want to play that because that's what it was. remember there's there's a, the crates that you had to move out of the way. There's a level like that's that in Alice. Crates. <laughs> there's a level like that in Alice. What the hell run. is going on? I don't know. Whatever. I don't like those games where I got to run from something. <laughs> I'm supposed but, to fight it. But like Alice, there, and I'm not going to spoil it because I recommend everybody play this game. Yeah. Because I recommend playing it it's too. It's not for everybody No, it isn't. But I recommend everybody playing it. Yes. <laughs> I recommend children playing it. They already are. Uh, <laughs> there are a couple different levels later on that I will say surprised me yeah. because they ch- completely change up the visual style. Hmm. And the, Oh, and I've it, heard about this. It yes. was awesome. Yeah, and yeah. I don't want to ruin it for anybody that's going to play the game, yeah, but it no, was awesome, unexpected, and hilarious. Cool. Yeah. And it kind of tied into something else that didn't make any sense for me that yeah. I watched throughout the rest of the game. Yeah, if you liked all those different elements in Alice. That's what it reminded me yeah. of when you yeah. said that because yeah. I thought that was awesome when it showed up in this game. And how about the the menus in between the levels? Totally oh, the little ghost guy. and goblin See, style. And that's what throws me <laughs> off too. Where it's like a side scrolling yeah. like, cutaway of like the levels. I did. And your all. dude would move. Yeah, I dig <laughs> all the like the design stuff mm-hmm. of the game, especially like the very intro and like you get like 
bah, like the movie. You it know, was totally screen. done like a movie. Yeah, it was totally done like that. And then those, like you said, like the oh, yeah, I heard screens. it was also kind of a grindhouse. Oh, yeah, gosh. it's yeah. kind of got that to it. I mean, there was some really like that game has a lot of like things. It's just there was at times I'm just like, oh my god, I don't want to hear about it anymore. And there was other one problem. The only time that the maybe dick- you just got uh, filled up on uh, there might be storm. <laughs> You that don't have be. room for another game with dick jokes in it. I will say that the, the dick jokes... Because I make I've, all my own I've dick got, jokes for all the games I play. You're like, oh, you beat me to it. Yeah, I don't need someone competing for me. Do you like it when you die, though, and you are and you fall down and your torch goes limp? Well, it goes... <laughs> or when you're in the darkness and you come out of it and your torch is all limp it, yeah. and then he stands back up again? Yeah, that was... When he dies, he's totally holding it by his crotch. So it all limp. That's what I didn't... Like, there was a part where he walks in and it just was, like, dangling. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> But I dig that little torch guy. He's I, cool. He's funny. He's cool. But, uh, one other problem, and we talked about the dick jokes being too much, and the only time I ran into it where it was way too much is that these, these short sequences you have to do where you, you kind of have three different paths and you have to shoot. It's almost like a turret section. Mm-hmm. And you get your gun gets really long. Mm-hmm. And it's the big boner. Mm-hmm. And so then all he does is just say the same two one-liners all the time. And Ooh. it was like, oh, yeah, taste that or something like that. Yeah. And then the other one is, taste my bi- suck on my big boner. Mm-hmm. And he and you do that for like fifteen minutes, and he See. just says it over and over about his big boner, and I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> but luckily, I got through it. And I, that's what she said. I highly recommend it. <laughs> Man, those are like five. That's what she said. It's all in a row right there. But it's very Man, arcade I was style. Yeah, some of them were on purpose. I, and I well, want I want the soundtrack. Sometimes it's worth it because the soundtrack's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I love that music. And they have a they swear in one of the achievements. It says fucking. <laughs> Has any other game done that? Well, it is pretty nice that you get five points right off the bat. You do get it for starting the game. Bam. There Hit it the is. the start button. Here's five bucks. Yeah, I mean, points. Five points. Nice. So there you go. I, I would love to hear from anybody else yeah. who played that game. Awesome. Maybe I need to I look at it. it. Maybe I need to look at it with Alice, unfilled Alice eyes or whatever. You need to. Yeah. Like, but still, I just, just it, was driving, me, it, it. Just Spe- was driving me nuts. Speaking of achievements, you know what's weird? Tell me. Trench has 20 achievements. Oh, really? I thought there was a limit on the number of achievements XBLA could have. Are yeah. the 20 10-point achievements? Uh, no, there there are some that are five Or like points. fives, and yeah. then they equal? Yeah. Hmm. But I'm like... Interesting. Because I went in there to look for the 12, because there's always These 12. Usually, yeah. There's usually, and that's one had weird. 20. I'm like, huh. Maybe that's they're different. Changing it up. What a bunch of jerks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got 1,000 on my green, green Lantern. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. I gave up on that game. You would. I stopped having fun. With the maw. It's never going to go there, though. <laughs> oh, you're missing maw points? That's like two years ago. I know. You're He's reaching never way back in the episodes, go. obviously. It's sad. Don't let it get you he down, He should buddy. be over there with the rest of the oh, you're Doritos oh, with the games. I do, my, Doritos <laughs> my three <laughs> games I've completed fully. <laughs> uh, Dorito. All right. All right. Is that it for our, like, 100 games to talk oh, about? Oh, thank God. That's yes. a lot of 100 games of summer? That's a lot of games. Yes. A lot of dick references. And I, I, I had a couple more that I, I'm sitting on until next episode yep. to try and not put this to a four-hour episode. So um, let's talk again about that contest real quick. Yeah. Just as a reminder to folks, uh, Dungeon Siege 3, we have a full retail copy of the game that we're going to be giving away through our website or through our forums. I'm sorry. So uh, check the link on the show notes or go to signedinpodcast.com. Mm-hmm. Hit our forums link right at the top there, and it'll take you right to our forums, and it should be right there on the on the highlighted somewhere we'll post it sticky it it'll be somewhere. put it in a sticky area yeah <laughs> continuity okay get it with our sticky aura yeah. <laughs> we will uh so we we would love to see you join in the forums and jump into the talk but you don't have to if you just want to sign up for our site and get on there and register for the game that'd be awesome hey you can just stick around and talk but we'd like you to stick around and talk it's a good community some good folks out there. Yeah, they are. We don't want to talk to you, but the you community might, would like to talk you to you. You might find some stuff about Monday Night Combat. <laughs> you yeah. might. Yeah, the thanks for reminding me of that, too. Let's set that up. We got okay. to. Let's make that really happen. Yeah, because yeah. I didn't play nearly as much as you guys did, even. <sighs> well, I need to play now, because I don't remember anything about it. <laughs> God, it was so long ago. Yeah, it, it was. was but I did game. play a lot. Yeah, we did. Was that last summer? It yes. Was, it was like a summer of arcade. It was like a big chunk a of us ago. playing it, and then it was Not like done. Like Almost. Ten months. Getting there. Oh, because it came out in August. Summer of Arcades in August, right? Yeah, it's almost July. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. It is almost. 
I don't know. I'm working. <laughs> Who knows, man? <laughs> All right. Uh, SignedInPodcast.com. That is our website. Uh, you can find our link to our Twitter, our Facebook, uh, all of our past episodes, our forums, where we'll be running that Dungeon Siege 3 contest. And I am proud, by the way, that I didn't say Dragon Siege at all the entire episode. Good job. I said Dungeon Siege. Because I've called it that everywhere else I've talked about I'm it. I'm mentally patting your back. Dragon Siege. No, I can feel something. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not my back. <laughs> uh and all of the other pseudo radio shows that we do. That's my skull headed friend. You can Johnson. <laughs> uh, you can email us at comments at signedinpodcast.com. We'd love to hear from you. Uh and that's about it. Next episode we're gonna talk about Transformers. Yes. Uh Fear Three or F three E A R. I can't <laughs> free say AR. It. Um, Fear. And I heard a new pinball game's coming out. <laughs> Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Oh, is that what that is? <laughs> that's 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 excitement. One of us might have already played it. Oh, well, it wasn't me. It's, oh, spoiler. It was me. Spoiler. <laughs> there's an embargo on it, but it's awesome. Sweet. So hopefully we won't get fired now. <laughs> Nobody employs us. Nobody can fire us. I implore you. We'll talk about it next episode, though. <laughs> nice. But save your money, kids. Save your money? Why? No. Because it's awesome. Spend it on trenched. Oh. oh, yeah, and by trench. Yeah, <laughs> by trench. <laughs> Should we get out of here? Yes. Bye, everybody. Bye. Later. Copyright 2011.